health care provider to determine what is right for you. Hey folks, Dr. Joe here. So glad you spent a little time with us today. Always Everybody's real busy. And today we're gonna to talk about sugar and Alzheimer's disease. Now, this is important because you're thinking to yourself, but Dr. Joe, I don't have Alzheimer's disease. I don't have to worry about it. Well, the only treatment, well, there is no treatment for Alzheimer's. The only treatment we know of is prevention. And so you really gotta pay attention. And especially on holidays, when somebody might be eating a lot of cakes and cookies and donuts and uh, sugary treats and uh, candies, we think, well, that's just a treat, Dr. Joe. I'm just gonna have that once in a while. What I want people to do is I want you to write down everything you eat. If you, if you see if you're lying to yourself, and chances are you are, because we all do. And on my website, drjoe.com, we have a, a form. You can go to patient forms, and it's called the, the diet diary. And just take that and write down everything you eat. Don't change your diet. Don't lie. Whatever it is, just write it down. I'm not going to look at it. It's strictly for you. And then after four or five days, go back and look at what you ate. You will be blown away with how much sugar you're eating every single day. Now, when I say sugar, you think, you know, ice cream and uh, candy. What about breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas? These are all sugars. Now, if you have sugar in fruit, that's different. We're going to cover that in a little bit. But fruit juice is just like drinking candy. It's really bad stuff. So Alzheimer's disease, it's a severe form of dementia. It affects an estimated 5.2 million Americans, and that was back in 2013. So that was a couple of years ago. Now, think about this. How many of you have been affected by someone with Alzheimer's? I have. I had a friend of mine whose mother had it, and I remember going there, and it was, it was almost like they were acting. If you've never been uh, exposed to it, you talk to somebody, and they're talking to you like they're joking with you, like somebody's being silly, and you're like, oh, come on, you know who I am. Oh, come on, you know what day it is. They don't. And the reason is the brain develops something called amyloid plaque. Now, amyloid plaques are things that we find in people's brains with Alzheimer's, and essentially it's a plaque that forms, and it prevents the nerves from traveling along the, the, the nerves and going into the part of the brain that's a memory. So that part of the brain is basically blocked off because of these amyloid plaques. Now, some research that we're leading toward now is toward something called a tau protein, T-A-U. Now, a tau protein is found in the brain, and it's supposed to be there. But what we're finding now, it seems to be that the tau protein are turning themselves inside out. And when they turn themselves inside out, they stick to each other. And when they stick to each other, we believe that now is forming the plaque. So now the question comes in is why is the tau protein turning itself inside out? And we think we know the answer. And that's what we're going to talk about today. If you have any questions, we're going to open up the phone lines, 844-44-DR-JOE. Uh, any questions, not just about Alzheimer's, but any, any questions you have on healthcare, 844-44-DR-JOE. Four, 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 One in nine seniors over the age of 65 has Alzheimer's. It's, it's thought to be the third leading cause of death in the United States, right, be, right behind heart disease and cancer. So you hear about heart disease, you hear about cancer, nobody talks about Alzheimer's. If you've ever been to a senior housing where they take care of seniors, I'm ready to explode every time I walk into one of these things because of what they're feeding these people. It's jello, it's cookies, it's cakes, it's breads, it's donuts, it's ice cream socials. And then they have people with Alzheimer's and they're feeding them the same thing. It's unbelievable. It's like throwing gas on a fire. I don't get why they're doing this. Well, I know why it's cheap. But still, if it's my mom in there, if it's my dad in there, I want to make sure that they're not being fed these things that we now show a link directly to Alzheimer's disease. So there's a growing research. Uh, it's powerful connection between your diet and the risk of Alzheimer's. And it's also called, uh, well, it's similar to type 2 diabetes. So what happens is with type 2 diabetes, you put sugar in your body, your brain uh, will utilize glucose as a fuel, and the way the brain utilizes glucose is you, your brain produces something called insulin. Now, now a lot of you are thinking, oh, no, 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 Dr. Joe, the pancreas makes insulin, not the brain. Wrong. We th I thought that too, by the way. The brain actually produces insulin, and insulin goes into the cells and unlocks the cell. That's like a key. Unlocks the cells and allows glucose to go into the cell and be utilized as fuel. It works throughout the body. It works in the brain. But when you eat too much sugar, your body produces too much insulin and the cells keep getting unlocked and sugar being dumped in there. The cells say, wait a minute, I can't take any more sugar. It's going to gunk up my works. So what I have to do is resist the insulin from opening me up. So now the insulin goes into the cell and says, okay, I'm a key. I'm going to open up the lock. And the cell says, uh, -uh, -uh you can't do that because I have too much sugar already. And the cells become insulin resistant. We call that type two diabetes. When it happens in the brain, it's now called type 3 diabetes. So Alzheimer's disease was tentatively, tentatively dubbed that 
in early 2005 when research dis researchers discovered that in addition to the pancreas, the brain made insulin and insulin is necessary for the brain cells to survive. And so that's where the problem comes in. But the good news is the brain doesn't have to use insulin. The brain can use other forms of fuel. And if we cut them off, if we cut off the brain from insulin and sugar, it can utilize other forms of fuel, which is kind of cool stuff. Now in your brain, insulin helps the neurons uptake the glucose. I keep bumping into the microphone today. I've never done that before, very odd. And it helps regulate the neurotransmitters. Things like acetylcholine, which is necessary for brain function as well. And that's critical for memory and learning. So if you start affecting the neurotransmitters, it's going to affect the acetylcholine, which is very, very important for memory. So research has also shown that type 2 diabetes lo diabetics lose more volume in their brain than expected, particularly in a part of the brain called the gray matter. And this is the kind of brain atrophy uh, that's contributing to things like dementia. So we're seeing that people with diabetes have worse, more susceptibility to Alzheimer's. We're seeing that the same mechanism is going on between type 2 diabetes and now type 3 diabetes, and that becomes a big issue. Folks, got to go to a break. If you have a healthcare question, not just about di uh, Alzheimer's and, and sugar, the number is 844-44-DR-JOE. My website, over a thousand hours of podcast there. In fact, this show tomorrow will be on the website, drjoe.com. So I know a lot of you are listening right now and saying, oh my gosh, I wish my friend or my mother, my father was listening to this. It's going to be on a website tomorrow, drjoe.com. If you have any questions, 844-44-DR-JOE. Folks, I got to go to a break. If you have any questions, call us right now. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. We'll be right back. We know how important the news weather is. Okay. Social media. Anything? We got lots of callers. How about you guys? Any questions? Not yet on. Instagram. Lewis, nothing. Garrett. <clears throat> we have a keto fan here. All right, keto fan. But I think that's uh, coming up in this show today. Yeah, we're gonna be talking about keto ketones and how they work, and um, of course, that's first question. That first question out of the box: ketogenic diet. Now we have to wait for ED, erectile dysfunction, and hmm. CBD or C black seed. There you go, black seed. There you go. Good, good. We got same questions every week, so. All right, we're going to cover keto, ketogenic diet and ketones and how the brain uses ketones and why it's good, but it can be bad and what you got to be careful about with the ketogenic diet. Sometimes it can be very dangerous, especially for your heart. So, yes. I have a question. Go ahead. You have a question. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, I work, we call them active agers in the fitness industry. We don't call them seniors. Yes, so we don't, agers. Yes, active <laughs> agers. So, for instance, I have a lot of active agers when they reach around 80. Uh -huh. You know, the taste buds change. Sure. And they seem to really, really love everything with sugar. Sure. And the confection mm -hmm. sugar. Um, my question would be, what would be the best way to kind of motivate them to kind of, you sure. know, to stem away from it rather than just health sure. reasons? Well, as you get older, the taste buds do, don't work as well. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is sugar stimulates a lot of taste buds. And so it's easy. Okay, so what's the one thing that's going to give me stimulation? Sugar. Mm -hmm. So they really crave that sugar. And also the brain is not going to be utilizing, or the body is not going to be utilizing sugar as well as it used to, so it's craving more sugar. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is get them active to utilize the sugar that they have. And that's why you as a trainer work so well. But you can give them things that'll taste sweet. Mm -hmm. You can use stevia. You can use lohan. You could use xylitol. Mm -hmm. And instead of the sugar, maybe make a lemonade with the stevia. Okay. And this way, they're getting their sweets, and the lemon is great. It's loaded with nutrients, and it helps alkalize the system. <coughs> Even though it's an acid, it ultimately alkalizes the system. And as we get older, our body becomes more acidic. So we're actually doing a, doing a favor by making them stevia sweet and lemonade. And for everybody, not just, I do that in the summer every day. So, oh, wow. good stuff. Awesome. Lewis, you look like you have a so question. It, no, it's, it, I, was, I was searching for one intently, and then there's, there's, it's kind of dead right now. Okay, so. that's all right. It gets rocking. All right. Sugar play a role in metabolism. Is intermittent fasting safe for diabetics? Okay, good. We've got lots of questions coming in today. That's funny. We always get a lot of questions, callers in, or we get a lot of social media questions. We never get, they never seem to correlate. Yeah, exactly. Not yet. What do you recommend for those with a sweet tooth? Just said that. Weren't you listening? <laughs> yes, but you just mentioned the, um, the gymnema. Gymnema. Ah, yes. Okay, if, you, if you're craving sweets, that's a good one. Thank you. Gymnema is a supplement. It comes from a tree, actually. It's used in Africa. And locals would use it if they had to travel long distances and didn't have necessarily have a supply of food. So the gymnema stabilizes the blood sugar. So you have this slow release of energy throughout the day. And so gymnema is a capsule, a cap lid, actually. And you can take it, and it'll stabilize the blood sugar. But here's something else you can do. When you're craving something sweet, you're going nuts. You have to have something sweet. 
take one to Kaplitz. We carry them at our office. If you call the office, it's not on the website. You need to call the office. It's a, a different company that we use. And um, chew it. Now, it doesn't taste good. But as soon as you put something sweet in your mouth, it has absolutely no flavor. So no matter how sweet it is, you can chew it and go, I taste nothing. And that's a good way to break that habit if you're really, really uh, jonesing for a sweet. So. Um, so is glucose a bad sugar? No. Glucose is necessary to keep you alive. There's different types of sugar. Glucose, maltose, galactose, lactose. Anything with OSE on the end is a sugar. Glucose is the one your body uses. Now, hopefully we're going to get to it because I, I never cover um, so much. <laughs> Don't take this call. <laughs> it's a good screener right there for you. Um, so what happens is I'm everything... I'm so tempted to take that call. You're tempted now? I'm so tempted. Because your mother said not to, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, where I ended up. So, <laughs> so what happens is uh, everything has to be converted into glucose to be used. And I'm going to cover fructose and the conversion of fructose into glucose in the liver and what that does to you. It's very, very bad. Little fructose is okay as long as it's in with other nutrients like a piece of fruit. Fructose by itself, like high fructose corn syrup, is just it's devil's food. It's just horrible. So. How do you spell Jemima? G-Y-M-N-E-M-A. That's a guy who went to high school in New Jersey being able to spell that. That's <laughs> impressive. Okay, that's traffic. Remember, folks, share it with all, all your groups and if share it with your other uh, social media groups. Dr. Joe can give you advice on how to naturally get well and stay well. Dr. Joe Esposito on WSB. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe. Glad you're there. We're talking today about sugar and Alzheimer's and how sugar gets into the body and can really lead to things like Alzheimer's. Now, you've heard me talk about sugar a lot with cancer, uh, with uh, kidney stones, with liver issues, fatty liver, but today we're talking about sugar and Alzheimer's. Now, your brain, in your brain, we talked about how insulin helps the body utilize glucose, and we talked about how type 2 diabetes is in the body, and the same reaction happens in the brain because the brain makes its own insulin, and now we're calling it, kind of dubbing it type 3 diabetes. So higher levels of glucose were associated with worse memory as well as a smaller hippocampus and a compromised hippocampal structure. Now, what the heck is a hippocampus? Sounds like a place where fat animals go to school, right? No, the hippocampus is a part of the brain that's important in memory. And so the more sugar you eat, the more likely you are to have a smaller hippocampus. And as the hippocampus shrinks, you're not able to utilize your brain as much. Now, I was talking to one of my, uh, my staff the other day, Tara, and I asked her her opinion on something. And uh, she said, I really like the fact that you asked my opinion. Well, I said, the reason is that a woman's brain works differently than a man's because you have two hemispheres of the brain and in between you have something called the, uh, the corpus callosum. And the corpus callosum is the communication between both sides. And as a man gets older, the corpus callosum gets smaller. So a man is able to process less information because there's less pathway. As a woman gets older, the corpus callosum gets bigger. So as a woman gets older, and Tara's in her 20s, but as a woman gets older, the brain is able to process more information. So it's really neat that a woman's brain actually works better as she gets older than a man's brain. Now, men, don't get mad at me. and Women, don't hold this against your significant others. This is just science talking, and that's what I do. I talk science here. So we talk about how the body works, and that's part of the problem. And as the hippocampus starts to shrink from too much sugar, uh, it affects your memory. So findings suggest that even if you're not diabetic or insulin resistant, and that's about 80% of Americans who fall into the latter category uh, who aren't, sugar consumption can still disrupt your memory. So don't give me that excuse. Well, I don't have diabetes. I don't have insulin resistance. It's going to have an effect on you. Long term, it can contribute to shrinking of the hippocampus, which is the hallmark symptom of Alzheimer's disease. So we can see the amyloid plaques, but we know as the hippocampus shrinks, the part of the brain that affects memory, that's what's being affected. So if the hippocampus is involved in formation, organization, and storage of memories. So sometimes you might remember something here or there, and that's when you, when you deal with Alzheimer's early on, you might remember something and then forget it. The, the hippocampus is starting to shrink. Now, the authors of this study suggest that strategies aimed at lowering glucose levels, even in the normal range, may beneficially influence uh, cognition in older population. So what do we do? Cut out the sugar. And Lauren here in the studio with us said at the break, she said she works with seniors. Uh, what did you call them, Lauren? I forgot. What was it again? Uh, active, agers. Uh, active agers. There you go. Yes, an active ager. And uh, not seniors. They're very nice. Very politically correct. And um, they crave sweets because as we get older, the, the, the taste buds start to die off. They don't work as well as they used to. And 
one thing that does get through is the sweet. And that's why we crave those sweets. And I said to Lauren, what you can do is give them stevia. And in the summer, especially, it's great. Make some lemonade. Sweeten it with stevia, lohan, uh, xylitol. And that's the use organic lemon juice. It's going to help alkalize the system. Organic lemon juice is amazingly powerful when it comes to nutrients. So you can give them lemon juice with water because most seniors are dehydrated because the part of their brain that controls thirst starts to go away as well. And so seniors don't drink a lot. And when they do, they want something sweet. So give them lemonade sweetened with stevia. And by the way, you should do that too. You've solved the problem. All right, let's take a bunch. We got a bunch of callers here. Let me start taking some callers here. Rhonda, how can we make your day better? Hey, Dr. Joe, thanks for taking my call. I have a two-part question. Go ahead. The first one is, can diabetics do intermittent fasting? They need to monitor their blood sugar when they do it. And as long as their blood sugar is okay, okay absolutely positively, yes, I think it's great. Okay. The second part is, is sugar similar to table salt, where as you get iodine from table salt, does sugar have any kind of basic function? Nah, the only thing is the glucose. Um, and it's funny because sugar, I was, on a, I, was a, I was on my friend's show, Eric Von Hessler's show a while ago, and I said, sugar is a salt. And he goes, what? Anything that dissolves in water, ionizes, is called a salt. So uh, sugar does dissolve in fluid, and that's why it's a salt. Um, but no, sugar really doesn't have any benefit, the, the table sugar that you're thinking of. Because we take the sugar from the cane or from the beet, whatever it is, process it, take all the nutrients out. What's left is just the, the glucose and the fructose. It's 50% fructose, 50% glucose. So the answer is no, you don't need added sugar ever under any circumstances. So it has no benefit. You can get all the sugar you need from your food. Okay, okay. great. Thank Thanks, you so Ron. much. Have a and then also, too, to follow up with Rhonda's question there, if you don't have sugar, your body starts taking protein and puts it in the liver and creates something called gluconeogenesis which is the production of sugar from proteins. So if you don't have sugar coming in, your body will make its own, which is fine. Uh, let's keep taking some callers. Troy, how can we make your day better? Hey, Troy. Troy. Hey, there you go. Joe, how are you doing? Very well. Uh, question real quick. I'll uh, ask the question, then I'll listen. Okay. Um, diet and bipolar disease. Can you comment on that? Oh, absolutely, Troy. Sure. Okay, so what happens is with diet and bipolar disease, and I've, I've been in practice for a long time. I've been in practice about 35 years. And uh, uh, you're going to listen on the radio, Troy? I'm sorry, say you that again? You want to just listen on the radio or you want to hang on? Uh, however you want to do it, I'm fine. Okay, yeah, okay. Um, so what happens is um, with, with the way the body works is the stomach produces uh, – stomach's job is to take proteins and break them into amino acids. I've been in practice 35 years, so I've seen a lot of bipolar patients. The stomach takes proteins and break them into amino acids. The amino acid tryptophan – Combines with vitamin B6, so you have to make sure you have your B vitamins in your body, to create a chemical called 5-HTP. 5-HTP becomes serotonin in the brain. And serotonin and the other neurotransmitters are vital in bipolar disease because the brain isn't working properly. So what we need to do then is get the body getting the proper amino acids by getting the stomach working properly. So every bipolar patient I've ever seen, bipolar anxiety, depression, suicidal even, ADD, ADHD, the stomach is pushed up into the diaphragm. And when the stomach pushes up into the diaphragm, the stomach is not digesting proteins properly. Some hallmark symptoms of that, acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, constipation, diarrhea. So we take the stomach and we massage it. We pull it down away from the diaphragm. Then we get them on some raw food, broccoli, cucumbers, tomatoes, avocados, because raw food has something in it called enzymes. And enzymes help break down the food. I also take those patients and put them on Dr. Joe's digestive enzymes. I take digestive enzymes every time I have a cooked meal. Okay, I had some uh, roasted Brussels sprouts today, and I took some digestive enzymes. The enzymes will help the proteins break down into amino acids, and that'll help the brain work more efficiently. Then from a chiropractic standpoint, we check the bones in the neck because if you have pinched nerves in the neck, that can affect the nerve and blood supply to the brain. So you got to fix the stomach. you got to get them on raw food, digestive enzymes, and in most cases, we get amazing results. Okay, Troy? That's, uh, that's, yes, sir. Thank you very All much. Right, my pleasure. And I'm glad you asked that question because that's a real common question. Because when patients come in the office, and I, we have offices in the Atlanta area, Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge, we used to, you know, 30 years ago, patients came in for back pain. We're chiropractors, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, car accidents. Now we see patients every single day with anxiety, depression, digestive issues. Um, what about diabetes? What about uh, ever, everything? I mean, you name the condition, people are coming to see us. Doc, I've tried everything else. Can we come see you? My doctors told me to come see you because they've given up on me. So it's really neat when you get the nervous system working from a chiropractic standpoint, the digestive system working by pulling the stomach away from the diaphragm, eating the right foods, 
I also recommend Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. The minimum, minimum supplements you should be taking every day are Super Greens and Essential Source. They're two powders. They taste great. They're all on the website, drjoe.com. And then we get the, 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 the brain working, stimulated. We're going to talk about what the brain needs to work. In most cases, we get amazing results. So if you have a health issue, neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, car accident, ever been in a car accident, if the car was damaged, you were damaged, come see us. Stop suffering needlessly. If you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, the website, 24 hours a day to make an appointment, drjoe.com. Folks, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. The phone number here at the studio with questions, 844-44-DR-JOE. Go to the website, over 1,000 hours of podcast there. Hey, tell your friends about the show. I'll be right back. <coughs> okay. Hold that one in. It's always funny. Who's ever, produce, who's ever running the board to get different music, you know? All right. <laughs> All right. We will start out. A here long segment here. We got Facebook. six minutes. Um, first up is lactose and sugar. And if so, why are we lactose intolerant? Because we don't produce an enzyme called lactase, which breaks down the lactose. And so you can't break down the sugar if you don't have the enzymes. Remember enzymes? Raw food, Dr. Joe's digestive enzymes. Uh, it doesn't have lactase in it, by the way. Uh, we're not designed to break down lactose, except when we're babies. When we're babies, we have the, lac the lactase to break down human lactose, not cow's lactose. It's a different type of sugar. So that's why we're lactose intolerant. Everybody is somewhat lactose intolerant. Uh, some people more obvious than others, but all of us don't do well with dairy sugar. So that's why you shouldn't do it. And do you remember the referral for Nashville? Okay. <laughs> I'll get on that uh, tomorrow morning. Okay. And how to help with alcohol withdrawal. Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source, and a lot of B-Complex. So Dr. Joe's complex, B-Complex, Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source, plant-based diet, go to the website, drjoe.com. There's two, two lectures I want you to listen to. Number one is the seven deadly sins of nutrition. And if we type that in the website, in the, it should, should pop up now, say yes, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then also I want you to type in the second one called, So What Can I Eat? Listen to the first, everyone should do this. Listen to the first one, The Seven Deadly Sins of Nutrition. Listen to the second one, So What Can I Eat? But supplement-wise, be complex. I would take double the dose that's recommended if you're going through alcohol withdrawal. Uh, super greens is an essential source. At least something raw at every meal. A salad, broccoli, cucumbers, tomatoes, avocados are great for that. And you've got to get the liver cleaned out. So in a case like that, I might also recommend milk thistle. Now, it's not on the website, but if you call the office, we carry milk thistle. And I'd get you on a milk thistle as well to help get the, the, the fatty buildup in the liver broken down. So that's my recommendations for alcohol or drug withdrawal. If only Dr. Oz would let you talk about that. I know. Dr. Oz, <laughs> when I was on Dr. Oz, they, they gave me a script, sort of, and I kind of followed the script a little bit. But, you know, that would have been a good one. So we'll be back a few weeks, right? Didn't they, yeah. they call it? They... Um, the new season is going to start uh, recording next month, I believe. Okay, yeah. So next, so next month or a month after, we'll be back up in Dr. Oz. So. All right. All right. I've got one lined up for you. Go ahead. Um, are there any natural remedies to help with hot flashes? Yes, absolutely. Uh, black cohosh is very good. Um, we have that. We carry that at the office. Super greens is an essential source. Nitric oxide to increase the circulation. And what's happening is your hormones are whacked out. They are not whacked out. I mean, you're going through a natural change in your life. But Dr. Joe's adrenal support. Because the adre adre adrenal glands produce your sex hormones along with your ovaries. As the ovaries start to dry up, like the men with testicles, we give them adrenal support. And the adrenal glands can kind of kick in and help with that. So great, super greens, essential source, nitric oxide, and adrenal support. Absolutely, positively. Good stuff. All right, I want you holding that bell. I'm ready, baby. Is there a special kind of chiropractor to deal with cerebellar ataxia and trigeminal neuralgia? Four big ones there. Yes. Yeah. All right. Garrett scores. Garrett's in the lead with four today. Uh, the answer is us. So there's your question, yes. Yeah, cerebe uh, cerebrum and cerebellum. Cerebrum's up front, cerebrum's in back. When a cerebellar isn't getting the proper neurological input, it affects your balance. That's why when you drink alcohol, it affects the cerebellum because the cerebellum has so much vascularity, so many blood vessels, that you get drunk and it, it makes you fall over. We can stimulate certain parts of the cerebellum depending which part isn't getting the proper neurological input. And the trigeminal neuralgia is also a cranial issue as well. The trigeminal nerve comes out of the skull and goes into the face. So we have to set the skull back in place, stimulate the cerebellum, and in most cases, we're pretty rocking. So Now for that black cohosh, um, mm -hmm. is that okay with antidepressants? It's not an MAOI inhibitor. By no, it should be fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, now, you were talking about breastfeeding versus cow milk. 
Um, what about the stuff that comes in powder or in a bottle? Like uh, soy milk, you can do soy. Um, is that better, worse, and if so, why? Well, breastfeeding, human breast milk is the best. Okay, if you're going to do powdered, if it's powdered cow's milk, it's the same reaction, so it's lactose in it. Um, if it's a soy milk, that's a challenge because if a mother isn't breastfeeding or can't breastfeed, it, there is no good substitute, unfortunately. So what I would recommend for that is you could probably do the soy um, or you can do the dairy if you need to. Go they do, um, they have donors. You could, that's true. I mean, you can ultimately I didn't know get. about that. Yeah, you can like get. A week yeah, some women are just wet nurses. They just pump and sell. Yeah. So, um, but if you're going to do it, make sure you're adding something else in there. Like, uh, you can even add a little bit of Dr. Joe's Essential Source or Super Greens to that as well to get the enzymes in there to help break it down. Let's see. Yeah, uh, so what can be done to help with vertigo? Vertigo usually comes from the cerebellum or the inner ear. And so we have to come in, you have to come see us. We have to figure out where it's coming from. Once we figure out where it's coming from, many times we can adjust the ears, we can adjust the nerve supply to the ears, we can stimulate the cerebellum and see if that helps. Many times, people with acid reflux, the stomach is up against the diaphragm, it's affecting the vagus nerve. Vagus nerve controls balance. Mm -hmm. So we can also look at that as well. So we have several different things we have to figure out where it's coming from. Yeah. All right, we have a long time listener. Uh, black cohosh didn't help me much. Okay. However, what did was red clover. Red clover is another one. Okay, sure. The problem is, um, their blood pressure is too low to take the red clover. Ah, try adrenal support to see if we can get the adre adrenaline, adrenaline working up again. Mm -hmm. So try that and see. Okay, going back to uh, human lactose, uh, can human lactose be synthetically produced and from natural sources? I have no idea. Yeah. You win, you stump me. <laughs> I don't know why you'd want to do that, yeah. but <laughs> it's an odd question, but I don't know why you'd want to do that. So. I have a different question. Okay. Um, Andy Brandon asks, can you help with type 2 diabetes? Oh, how many shows have we done on type 2 diabetes? Um, at least two this year. Okay, go to the website, drjoe.com, type in diabetes, and you will see plenty of shows on that. We cover that a lot because this is kind of tying into all this. So, yeah. But short answer, yes. So the short answer is most likely. We can never make promises, but yeah. the short answer is, yeah, we get pretty good results in those. So. And then I had a question. So I have <clears throat> clients that are motivated to lose weight yes. and they work hard for six months to a year and mm -hmm. they don't lose anything. Mm -hmm. They finally go to the doctor and find out they have a thyroid sure. uh, irregulation. Mm -hmm. So what would be the best? Well, with hypothyroid, you have to get the thyroid stimulated. And the thyroid needs uh, iodine to work. Most people are iodine deficient, yeah. okay? Especially in our society. If you're, if you're in Japan, you're eating seaweed all the time, you probably have enough iodine. The problem is we're mostly deficient in iodine. Okay. Got to stand by. Brooks for News 95.5 so, hold that thought. 750 WSB. Depend on it. If you ignore your health, it will go away. Listen to Dr. Joe Esposito on News 95.5 and AM 750 WSB. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe here. So glad you're with us. Talking today about Alzheimer's and sugar. Really important topic uh, because we had somebody on hold. It was a great question. She hung up on us. Uh, she said she's 70 years old. She's eating sugar. Does she still have to worry? And the answer is yes. Now, different people metabolize things differently. So not everybody's going to have the same reaction. If I smell alcohol, I start getting a little tipsy. I remember stopping at a, a, a brewery, a distillery in Tennessee. You, you know the name. And I was driving back from a lecture I gave up in Nashville one time years ago. And I said, eh, let me go to this famous distillery. And I took a tour of the place. And they can't sell it. Ironically, where they make it, it's a dry county. But they let you smell the mash. And they said, here, we're going to lift it up and you take a big whiff. And I took a big whiff and I started getting tipsy. So me and alcohol, we don't work too well together. So everybody responds differently. But the answer is yes. And also, if she's 70 years old, this person, she didn't eat nearly as much sugar as she does now when she was younger. So her body was healthier. And number two, it was a different type of sugar. Now we're processing the sugar and bleaches and chemicals and genetically modified uh, beets are making it. So it's a, even a different sugar than even 30 years ago. So the answer is yes, we all have to worry about sugar because we all have to deal with it the same way. Uh, let's see, a lot more to talk about sugar and Alzheimer's, but let's take a call here. Got a lot of callers here. David, how can we make your day better? Hello, thank you, Dr. Joe. Thank you for taking my call and thank you for taking this serious topic of the brain. Thank you, you're welcome. There are, there are some, there's some commercial on television that talk of... Uh, Making something to have the memory. Sure. 
And then, let me see how to say it. <laughs> I'm hearing my voice. Okay, let me repeat. Yeah, please. yeah. To, let's, let's turn around. I'm going to put you on hold. Put the, to, put the, turn your radio off, and I'll come back to you, okay? You got to put down your radio off, okay? Hold on one yes. second. Yeah, folks, if you do call in, please turn off your radio because you hear your own voice there because we're on a delay here. So uh, just do that for me if you would. So we're talking today about Alzheimer's disease and sugar. Let's see if David had time to turn it off yet. How, how about now, David? Better? Uh, yeah. Yes, doctor. Yes, okay. So your question is about fish oil and memory. Is that what your question is all about? I don't know what they call it. It's uh, advertised on, on television. Okay. And they say they make it from the fish. Okay, yeah. All right, let me address that for you. Okay, so fish oil, omega-3 fatty acids are very good. The brain needs omega-3 fatty acids, and it's an essential fatty acid, which means if it's essential, we don't make it ourselves. We have to get it from an outside source. Fish oil is not my favorite source of omega-3 fatty acids because most fish oil, unless it's been filtered and distilled, can have toxic chemicals in it like mercury. So if you're going to buy a cheap fish oil, you actually can make the problem worse by putting toxins into your body. If you're going to do fish oil, it has to be certified mercury-free. But better yet, why don't we do something called krill oil? Krill is small. They look like shrimp, basically. And it's in the, the omega-3s are in what's called the phospholipid form. It's already in a form that your body needs. Fish oil has to be converted into the phospholipid form. So krill oil is a much better choice than fish oil. However, there's a better choice still, and that would be algae oil. Now, algae oil is a little expensive. It's the one I take every day, but it's an excellent source of omega-3 fatty acids. I take 1,000 milligrams, or the same as a gram, a day. So if I do that along with the nitric oxide, Dr. Joe's nitric oxide is excellent for opening up blood supply to the brain. Because people ask me all the time, how do I answer these questions? How do I give lectures without notes? And the reason is my brain works pretty well. So uh, omega-3 fatty acids, super greens, essential source, and nitric oxide, those are my secrets. Okay, David? Doctor, I'm not... I'm not Allow me to ask one more. All right, hurry up. We're up against the clock. The medical doctor walking out of Arizona, he says he has uh, formulated something for older people like us to live, to, to, to reduce our longevity, you no, know, to reduce our age from 90 to 30. In other words, we are going to live additional more years. Okay. With wow. Okay, if you have that, send it to me through the website because I'd like to know what that is. I'm kind of curious. I got to run, David. Thanks so much. Yeah, so a lot of times people will make promises about things, and it doesn't necessarily mean it's true. Um, there is something called resveratrol. Resveratrol can actually uh, reverse some of the aging because your cells have something on it called a telomere. Telomere is like a little tail on it. And resveratrol has been shown to help reverse uh, the, 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 the generation of the telomere, which is amazing. And a great source, well, a source of resveratrol is red wine. So here we go. If we drink red wine, it can help us uh, help the, reverse the aging process. Here's the catch. If you're drinking wine, it's got to be organic. If it's not organic, it doesn't produce resveratrol because the grapes produce resveratrol when they're exposed to fungus. If the grapes are not organic, they're sprayed with a fungicide, they don't have to produce resveratrol because they're not exposed to the fungus. And if you're drinking organic, you probably have to drink about a case of wine a day in order to get a medicinal effect. Now, that is not permission for you to go out and drink a case of wine. I don't want anybody calling me tomorrow and saying, well, my friend said, Dr. Joe said I should drink a case of wine a day. I didn't say that. Okay, so resveratrol, you can get it from Japanese knotweed. You can get it from uh, grape seed. Uh, but if you eat a good diet, here's the secret to anti-aging. And I think I've done shows on this before is don't speed up the aging process. And there are seven foods that speed up the aging process. Alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. My God, that's most of your diets. So if you cut out the alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener, in most cases, you're probably going to live a lot longer. The longest living people in the world, Loma Linda, California, and there's a group, uh, I think, in uh, Siberia, they eat a plant-based diet. So the one thing everybody has in common that lives a long life statistically is they have a plant-based diet. So cut out the bad foods. Don't treat yourself. Well, it's my birthday. I'm going to go for a treat. It's Monday. I had a stressful day. I'm going to have a glass of wine. Oh, my gosh. It's Wednesday. Girls' night out. We're going to have some margaritas. Don't treat yourself. Because what you're doing is you're really poisoning yourself. Treat yourself with something good. Dr. Joe Supergreens, Dr. Joe Essential Source. Go to my website. Listen to other, other uh, radio shows that I've done. Over 1,000 hours of radio and television shows there. That's a treat for you. Get the brain working. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. All right. So we're talking about how sugar affects the brain and Alzheimer's disease. And strategies aimed at lowering glucose are going to be the best thing you can do. 
Limiting your consumption of sugar and non-vegetable carbohydrates is one of the most important steps you can take to prevent Alzheimer's because of this very reason. Plant-based diets very seldom that people have things, most diseases, that just doesn't happen. A researcher in the Mayo Clinic found that diets rich in carbohydrates are associated with 89% increased risk of dementia. So if I'm going to do something and increase my risk of, of getting a disease by 89%, I'm not going to do it. So why don't you do it too? But the problem is sugar tastes so darn good. And sugar stimulates the dopamine receptor sites in your brain and you get high from it. That's why you eat a little sugar, you want more. The key is, if you're like me, is you can't even start. I always joke, I can't eat a cookie. I can eat a box of cookies, but I can't eat a cookie. So research shows that your brain has great, some, great, great ability to have something called plasticity. And which you control through your diet and your lifestyle choices. Plasticity is like plastic. It can bend and mold and change shape. So your brain can actually heal itself. It can rewire itself. That's why you see somebody who has a stroke and they go through therapy and many times they start to get their motion back because part of the brain was damaged in the stroke, but the brain's plasticity kicks in and it can rewire around the damaged areas. And as chiropractors, my team of doctors and I have trained them all and they have a lot of knowledge themselves. We learn how to stimulate different parts of the brain through chiropractic care, through adjustments. So most people think about neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, that's a chiropractic thing. Well, yeah, but also it helps stimulate the brain. It helps open up the nerves to the organs. I couldn't imagine life without access to chiropractic care. If you knew what I knew, you would do what I do. I promise you that. So it'd be a good idea. If you have a healthcare problem, come see us. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. My website, 24 hours a day, drjoe.com. If you have any questions, you can call them in right now. The number is 844-44-DR-JOE. And if you don't get through, you can always send them through my website, drjoe.com. We can answer questions for you there as well. Uh, again, folks, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. Hey, do me a favor. Tell your friends about the show. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. We live stream a lot of our shows. I'll be right back. you neck pain back pain shoulder pain headaches chances are you'd benefit from chiropractic care most people benefit from chiropractic care because chiropractic care tries to get to the cause of your problems and not just cover up the symptoms if you're ready to get well i want you to go to my website drjoe.com or call 844-44-DR joe and make an appointment for you your friends and your family today we have offices in marietta the blue fence stock bridge Make an appointment today so we can help get you well and keep you well. Are you experiencing hot flashes or fatigue? <laughs> Have you so? All right, okay. so yes. uh, we missed the teaser, but what we're going to do is uh, bring on a couple of callers for the next segment okay. and then go into the teaser and then go into head to toe. Okay, good. Okay, yeah. Because the next segment's short. No, they're all the same size, aren't they? Some are short, some are longer. Are they? Oh, I thought they were the same size. Okay, yeah. I right, just remind me at the end of this segment that I'll, I'll do a teaser. Okay. Good. Cool. Um, tons and tons and tons and tons of questions. <sighs> now way, you show up. You're <laughs> smart and a nerd. Me? Yes. Yes, I am. Thank you. <laughs> and look like Jerry Seinfeld. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and Ray Romano. <laughs> How do you get more iodine into your diet? Dr. Joe's Essential Super Greens. Chlorella and spirulina is a great source of omega-3, and then we had dulse to it, and dulse is a uh, great source, the pure, best source of iodine. And we also had sea vegetables on super greens. So by taking super greens an essential source, answers your question, gets the iodine in for the thyroid. So cover two questions at once. Yeah. All right, so what do you do to bring up low uh, ferritin? I have severe fatigue, brain fog, and fibromyalgia. Okay. So that's several different answers. Number one, we got to fix your digestive system uh, for the brain fog, because that's the, the neurotransmitters for the brain. Um, the next thing we have to do is uh, look at, uh, I would go to an uh, 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 gastroenterologist and make sure there's no bleeding. In case you have bleeding in the body, that could be lowering your ferritin levels, your iron. And the iron, great, anything green or red is going to be a great source of iron. So red beans, uh, strawberries, cherries, green leafy vegetables, super greens, essential source, great sources of iron. So if you're not absorbing your iron, it could be the stomach up against the diaphragm. It could be a digestive issue. So you might want to come see us, and we'll check that. Super greens an essential source, great sources of iron. And then if that still doesn't fix it, you might want to consider a gastroenterologist if you have any internal bleeding. Give us some red velvet cake. Red velvet cake. I'm going to take away a bell for that. <laughs> I don't know how to make a bell go backwards. <laughs> He's a wise guy. Yeah. All right. All right. We got a question. Would teenagers potentially grow taller if they get regularly adjusted? Oh, absolutely. No, I, and so do adults. In fact, most people, when they get adjusted, grow about a quarter inch. Because if the bones are out of place, they're compressing the discs. And we put the bones back in place, it opens it up. 
And with teenagers, absolutely, open up the nerve supply to the thyroid, the, the pituitary gland, whatever it is. So potentially, absolutely. I mean, can't promise anything, but the nice part is it's pretty safe. So it's, it's, it's what I would do. All right, how do you help with vitamin D deficiency? Vitamin D deficiency, you gotta get out in the sun. And you wanna get out in the sun until your skin turns a little bit of red. So if somebody's fair skinned, you can go out there for about you know 10 minutes a day. If you're dark skinned, you might wanna go out there 20, 25 minutes a day. And you don't have to be running around naked. You can just have your sleeves, maybe your shirt open, your face. Uh, I have a sunroof and I open my sunroof when I drive just to get sunlight on my body. So if you can get, between, as soon as the skin turns a little red, you're producing about 20,000 international units of vitamin D. Now in the winter, you want to take Dr. Joe's vitamin D complex, which is... Up front. Up front, right there. There you go. That's, this is what I take in the winter. I take this every day, and then in, in the summer, I try to get as much sunlight as I possibly can, and that's a great way to do it. If you're on statin drugs, it can lower your cholesterol. You need cholesterol to produce vitamin D. UVB rays interact with cholesterol to create vitamin D. So if you are on statin drugs, go to my website and listen to the radio shows we've done on cholesterol. So. Speaking of cholesterol, Ed, Good or bad or egg white? I don't do them. I've been a vegan for over 32 years now. So far, so good. I'm going to give it another 100 years. If it doesn't work, I'm going back to meat. Um, and then <laughs> but uh, I don't do them. If you're going to do them, they have to be organic. That's the bottom line. Okay. Uh, they, there's so many studies showing that they really don't affect cholesterol. Um, but if you're eating a bad diet and eggs are part of it, that can affect the liver, which can then affect the cholesterol. Yes. So if you're going to do it, they got to be organic. How about that? Uh, do you recommend taking vitamin K2? Yes, the vitamin D3 has the K2 in it. Okay. That's why I put them together. Aha, because K1 and K2 are different, yes. Um, so is there anything wrong with drinking pomegranate juice? Yes, I like too much to sugar. mix your super greens with it, just worried about the sugar content. Yeah, so dilute it as much as you can. Use as little as you can. How about that? Five most dangerous words in the English language are, maybe it will go away, stop suffering, and start getting well. Dr. Joe Esposito is on WSB. Hey, Dr. Joe here. So glad you're there. We're talking today about sugar and Alzheimer's disease. Now, you've heard me do many shows on sugar and how bad it is, but you've probably never heard this show because I've never done it before. So there you go. So a lot of research shows that the brain has the plasticity. We talked about that. And lifestyle choices are the key to improving plasticity. Uh, when we get time, if I, when, when I, at the top of the beginning of the next hour, I'm going to do a segment in the show called Head to Toe with Dr. Joe. And this, uh, this set, session, we're talking about the brain. It just so happens to coincide with uh, sugar and Alzheimer's. But we're going to talk about what it takes to get the brain working and what you can do to activate this plasticity capabilities. So it's really cool. Um, so you don't want to miss that. It's going to be right at the top of the hour. So that's one of our new segments that Garrett decided I was going to do one day. And he says, you're doing this. And I said, okay, because Garrett's my producer and I don't argue with him. Uh, but the American public grossly brainwashed by the sugar industry into believing that sugar is perfectly healthy nutrient and is part of this nutritious breakfast because it's not. Okay, sugar is not part of any meal. And according to the Centers for Disease Control, 13% of the average American diet is sugar. 13%, that's crazy. And the United Kingdom recently published a report from the Scientific Advisory Committee on Nutrition recommends that limiting your sugar intake to 5% in order to avoid obesity and type 2 diabetes. They calculate this to the equivalent of about 25 grams of sugar. That's about five to six teaspoons of sugar for women and 35, seven to eight teaspoons of grams of sugar for men. I've been using these numbers for years. I think they stole them from me. Let me go back to some callers. Then we'll come back to the, the topic of uh, sugar and Alzheimer's disease. Who was first? Ah, there we go. Homer, how can we make your day better? Hey, Dr. Joe, how you doing tonight? I'm happy you're calling, doing great. Uh, my father-in-law, he says sometimes when he pees, he has a pain that goes down his arm and in, uh, into his hand and through his finger, his middle finger on his right hand. Okay. It, is, it feels like electricity and it's very painful. And sometimes it even makes him stop peeing. Sure. Okay. You want to check the prostate because a lot of nerves control the prostate. And so if you're affecting nerves, all the nerves are connected. So it's kind of like a Christmas tree. If one light bulb in a Christmas tree short circuits, it can affect light bulbs on the other side of the Christmas tree. And so even things like this, when urination and pain in the middle finger, that's the seventh cervical nerve. We, the, the thumb and the index are the sixth cervical nerve. The middle is the seventh, and the other two fingers are the eighth cervical nerve. So we know where it's coming from. It's coming from the seventh cervical vertebrae in his neck, shooting down into that hand. Why is it going up the spine and, and synapsing or, or uh, crossing over at the seventh cervical nerve? I don't know if we know that, but I would have his prostate checked to make sure he doesn't have a prostate issue. If he does, he definitely wants to get that taken care of. 
Um, I would check the nerves in the low back because that's the nerve supply to the prostate and the bladder. And then I would check the seventh cervical nerve because that's the nerve to the hand. So I would check those three things and let's see if we can get rid of that because it's a warning sign. It's telling him something's wrong. I don't think he should ignore it. All right. Sounds okay. good. I, just, I want to give a shout out to Dr. Cat at your Duluth office. Oh, isn't she wonderful? Yes. She's wonderful. Oh, uh, thanks, Homer. I appreciate that. Yeah, Dr. Cat runs our Duluth office. Uh, Dr. Amy uh, runs our Stockbridge office. And then in my office, uh, I'm in mostly the Marietta office. Uh, all the doctors come there once a week, at least. Uh, I'm there. Dr. Gale is there. Dr. Sam is there. Dr. Irwin is there. All my doctors are just amazing. And I don't take a doctor on unless I trust them taking care of me. If they're not my doctor, they're not your doctor. So we've got some really good doctors. And, and again, patients are always giving shout outs to our, our doctors all, <laughs> constantly on Facebook and Instagram. And I get messages. I got a letter the other day from one of my secretaries. Uh, Brendan got a, a, a wonderful accommodation from one of our patients. So we've got a real good staff. Oh, and by the way, we want to add people to our staff. We're looking for two more people to join our office. It's front desk. Um, if you if you're, live a healthy lifestyle, if, certainly if you know about nutrition, if you've ever run a, a front desk in a doctor's office, send me a resume through drjoe.com. We'd love to hire you. So uh, do that. If you know, and if you know somebody, please pass that information on. We, we need two more people at least. So. so anyway, there's a little free plug there. So let's keep talking about how the brain and the uh, uh, sugar uh, kind of correlated here. So I've been talking for years. Uh, about about 25 grams of fructose a day, and now everybody else is jumping on a bandwagon as well. So I restrict uh, fructose consumption to 25 grams a day from all sources, not just added sugar. So that includes non-vegetable carbohydrates. Uh, crazy enough, Scientific Advisory Council on Nutrition still recommends you get 50% of your daily intake in the form of starchy carbohydrates. I don't know where that, they're saying limit the sugar on one hand, and they're saying 50% of your diet should be carbohydrates. I don't know where those numbers come from. Uh, obviously, that's a significant risk to insulin resistance. So if you're insulin resistant or leptin resistant, diabetic, overweight, have high blood pressure, heart disease, cancer, you really want to restrict your sugar down to eat as low as 15 grams if you want to do it right. Now, insulin resistance, we talked about that earlier. I know folks just jump in the show sometimes. Uh, insulin goes into the cells, acts like a key, opens up the cell and allows sugar to get in. And if you eat too much sugar, you produce too much insulin, and so the cells become insulin resistant. They don't want to open up anymore. They can't take in any more sugar, and that's called type 2 diabetes. Leptin, I want to cover that real quick because another question people always ask me, Dr. Joe, I'm always hungry. I want to lose weight. Your stomach produces a hormone called leptin. Leptin goes up into the hypothalamus in the brain and tells you that you're full. When you eat too much, your body produces too much leptin, and the, the, the brain, the hypothalamus, becomes leptin resistant. Same thing like insulin resistant. So that's why I used to be fat. I can say the F word. And I would just eat and eat and eat and eat. And I was full and I was fat and I was bloated and I felt miserable and I kept eating. And the reason was I believe I was leptin resistant. And so once I cut back on my food intake, my brain kind of rebooted itself and I wasn't leptin resistant anymore. So if you have that problem, you just can't stop eating. Chances are you have leptin resistance. And many times if the stomach is up against the diaphragm, and I know this because it happens to me every now and then, I'm eating, I'm full, it hurts, and I want to keep eating. My stomach isn't getting the message to the brain, the hypothalamus, to tell me that I'm full. I grab one of my doctors, I tell him to pull my stomach away from the diaphragm, and it's amazing. Almost instantly, I feel full, and I'm, I'm back to normal again. So getting that stomach adjusted is really important. Getting the spine is the most important thing for neck pain, back pain, car accident injuries. That's the most important thing. The second most important thing is fixing the stomach, and right up there with that is the nutrition. So if we can get those things done, the nervous system, the digestive system, and your diet, which we're going to talk about at the top of the hour, you'll be amazed what happens. All right, let's take another caller, 844-44-DR-JOE. Boy, we got a lot of callers today. Alvin, thanks for holding. How can we make your day better? Hey, hey, Doc. How you doing? Doing well. Great. Question. Um, exercise. Um, if you're getting a treadmill and you do a certain amount of uh, minutes or whatever, do it open up the sales? Oh, yeah, you know, after, oh, after yeah. After you deal with the sugar situation? Absolutely, yes. If you're going to eat, exercise is definitely good because it makes the cells open up and use the sugar. But here's the thing. Don't eat any sugar after exercise because it'll slow down your human growth hormone. So if you eat anything sugary, eat it before exercise, but you got to wait at least three hours after exercise because if you eat anything sugary, you're kind of wasting your body's ability to produce human growth hormone. Okay. Okay. Question: How yeah. how many times a day do I need to get on a treadmill on um, well, on a you, regular basis? If you can do twenty minutes a day, that's fine. You don't have to do more than that. You can do more if you want to, but twenty minutes a day should be fine. Is okay. Do, do uh, depends on the speed. On um, the, uh, somewhat, yeah. 
Uh, Alvin, I got to run, okay? I'll try to get to that question at the break. Uh, folks, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. Next section coming up, we're going to do Head to Toe with Dr. Joe. We're going to talk about the brain and how the brain works, which is kind of cool stuff. Uh, if you have any healthcare questions, the lines are open, 844-44-DR-JOE. If you want to make an appointment to come see us, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. My website, drjoe.com. We work with most insurance companies, car accidents, sports injuries. I know everybody asks the same question. Uh, but any questions, you can call the office. Uh, uh, that number, 844-44-DR-JOE, rings through to my offices when I'm not on the air. I'll be right back. Okay. Good. I, I wish I could stay, but I have I have to get down to How dare life get in the way, right? Yes. Well, I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for my gift. I really oh, appreciate yeah, that. My pleasure. And uh, you you, told, you know what I want now. I know. Start what you thinking want. about it. Good. Oh, I already it's already been thought about. Excellent. It just Good. Needs to be talked about and and done. Good. So, Upcoming yeah. week. Let's get together and talk then. Yeah. I want awesome. it to happen fast. I'm, me as well. I have no patience. Okay. Good. I'm a Leo. Good. So we'll right, there you go. It. Awesome. Good. <laughs> I love All it. All right. Cool. Thank you know your way out, right? Yeah. Okay. Good. Yes. Okay. Secure to let you out then. So awesome. Talk to you soon. Thank you again. All right. The girls are leaving. Now we can talk about them. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> right? I love it. And thanks nice for having me on the show. It oh, nice my pleasure. Glad you were here. Thank you. All right. Nice to meet I gotta you. Get a hug. Right. There you go. I got Great. to talk oh. to Big Dr. Joe. There you go. Thank thanks. You. Awesome. All right. Say bye. I got things right here. Do you see it? Yes. Okay. There you go. Good. What do I got? <laughs> I haven't eaten anything. Um, <laughs> <And> schmutz. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So. Is it safe to drink unfiltered tap water? I prefer you don't. I like Pure Life. Yes. Pure Life. Uh, That's pure a life filter I have in my office. Life. I have my house, Pure Life. It's a whole filter. Um, and I filter every drop of my water. It's really cool because when you have filtered water like that and you shower, it's, it's like it, the, the soap rinses right off. And yeah, it, it feels so, your skin feels so soft. You think it's still, still on you, but it washes right off. It's amazing. But everything I drink, I wash my clothes in. Uh, shower, everything is filtered water. I, I would prefer you don't drink tap water. How bad is it to drink out of a out of a garden hose? Well, I'm alive. <laughs> I used yeah. to do that all the time. Oh, we all did, yeah. yeah. But it releases a lot of chemicals um, from from the, the plastics get into there, and hormone disrupting chemicals. So especially yeah. sitting out in the sun all day. Oh, of course, yeah. It's like yay, you taste it, right? Mm -hmm. Still taste. It. Mm -hmm. Okay, I literally can. I can taste that. Okay, as soon as you said right. it, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you should consider opening an office in the Canton, Cherokee County. We are considering that, as a matter of fact. So funny you'd say that. So. Um, and I've been listening in the car for the last 45 minutes, told my friend to tune in because her grandmother has severe dementia. There you go. Uh, as long as you avoid any added sugar, that must always be avoided according to the seven deadly sins. Yes. Um, but about the last caller, I would think vegan protein powder is okay, correct? It's okay. You don't need it, but it's okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hello from Florida. Hey, Florida. Shout outs. And anyone else, you guys are all around the country, around the world. Give us a shout out. Let us know where you're listening. And make sure you share it. Share it with all your friends. And again, this show will be on the website tomorrow. This According to Garrett. Where, uh, evil Dr. Joe. Would, would evil, evil Dr. Joe recommend drinking a case of wine a day? Absolutely. Anti Dr. Yeah. Joe. Anti Dr. Joe. That's oh, we got to get Tim on. Tim, Tim said he'd call in with us. He said, he said he'd do segments with us. So, yeah. Yeah. So now we're going to bribe him to just take over and do a whole two hour show. I told him that. He goes, I don't know if I want to do that. I said, I bet you Garrett can convince you. <laughs> but imagine a whole show on Anti Dr. Joe. <laughs> I'll give him fish tickets. Oh, oh yes. Oh, I said it's a fish cover band. I sent him a link to a fish cover band I saw recently. So, cover band of a cover band. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> of what was originally a cover band. Well, oh, really? I didn't see. I heard I, there was a Barely Manilow. Was, so I saw that, so I don't know if that was real or not, but I thought that's a great idea. Um, <laughs> what do you think of taking niacin, 300 milligrams, to deal with nerve signals? Uh, it can help, but I would take Dr. Joe's B-complex, because what we find is that you really want to take the complex. Like, we talk about turmeric, and turmeric has a component called curcumin. And curcumin is the active ingredient in turmeric that helps with inflation, inflammation and cancer cells. But we've done studies with turmeric and separating out curcumin. The turmeric works better than the curcumin, even though it's the same amount of curcumin, because things work better synergistically in the whole thing. So I would take Dr. Joe's B-complex, and I think you'd do pretty well with that. All right. How often do you recommend milk thistle detox? <sighs> Daily. Yeah, I, 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 I got to be careful because I took the recommended dose. I got a blazing headache. So my body just dumped all this waste product because your liver is always producing waste product. So I would say do it for a month, give it a break, maybe three or four months, and then do it again. So, 
Uh, let's see here. I've been waking up nauseous every morning for the past month. I'm postmenopausal, so I'm not pregnant. Okay. Obviously. <laughs> Jump to that conclusion. All right, we got Conyers, Georgia, Tacoa, hey, Georgia. I didn't answer my question. <laughs> Oh, sorry. No, sorry. That was she. She just was commenting on. Yeah, she's been waking yeah. up nauseous. So uh, come see no us. Let us check your stomach because the stomach could be up against the diaphragm, and a lot of times people have nausea from that. And when you lay down, you don't have gravity pulling your stomach down, so grab the stomach slides up and it irritates the vagus nerve, which can cause the nausea. So I've seen that a lot. You might want to come see us. Let us check that. Yes, Mr. G. Uh, well, on the same kind of topic, how often should one fast? Uh, depends what kind of fasting you want to do. Intermittent fasting, which means you skip a meal. I usually skip dinner. About twice a week is, is good if you do it on a regular basis. Um, if you want to go on a more deeper fast, I would recommend Super Greens and Essential Source. I don't like doing just a water fast. I think the body doesn't do real well with that. But Super Greens and Essential Source fast is awesome. Uh, you can do that every season, every change of the season. So now spring comes in, do a fast. This fall comes in, do a fast. Uh, and I'd probably do about four to six days. It's good. Uh, you can go up to 10 days. After 10 days, you really need some supervision. So. And we have... Um... We have a couple different types of cleanses that we offer. We have great cleanses. We have the weight, doc, doctor supervised weight loss program. Um, so if you're serious about wanting to lose weight, it was, is a great jump start. And then we put together a nutrition plan from there. But it's a 21 day cleanse. So that's a real good thing you can do. You aren't eating and, and taking supplements and drinks and powders, uh, but really kind of jump starts the weight loss program. And a lot of people do that and just love it. So. All right. What do you think of? Is it Batine ACL? Batine. Batine. Okay. Half a bell. Half a bell. I can't give you half a bell on that. So you got the HCL right, yeah. Betaine hydrochloride is okay. It stimulates your digestion, but that's only one thing. It's going to break down proteins. I would recommend Dr. Joe's digestive enzyme capsules, which has protease, amylase, and lipase to help break down proteins, carbohydrates, and fat. So that's what I would recommend above the betaine hydrochloride. Nothing wrong with betaine hydrochloride. It just doesn't in thorough enough. So. All right. Uh, do you still recommend taking vitamin D3 and K2 supplement when it's not winter? No. If you're getting sunlight, then you don't need it. If you're not getting sunlight and it's, win it's not winter, then you need to take it. Next time you get your blood work done, measure, measure your vitamin D. It's real simple. It's a real cheap test. Oh. You want to do your reads right here? Oh, yeah. That's right. Thank <laughs> you. Oh. <laughs> scared, scared him. <laughs> hey, look, what? Where? Hey, hey. Forgot about that. See, somebody's smarter than me. Everybody's smarter than me. <laughs> oh, I thought he was about to speak. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. This week we're talking about sugar and Alzheimer's disease. You don't want to miss this one because you can be susceptible. Dr. Joe Esposito here. This week on our show we'll be talking about sugar and Alzheimer's disease because this isn't something you're going to know about until later on in life. You need to take action now. Hey, we're talking about sugar and Alzheimer's disease and what you need to do... Hey, we're talking about sugar and Alzheimer's disease and what you need to do about it this week on the Dr. Joe Show. There we go. Um, no, you're fine. I should have said something more. I should have said something at all. I didn't say anything. What did you say? Circled there. <laughs> holding up the teaser. Oh, okay. I'm just not a very impulsive person. So all right. All right. Are essential oils helpful? Yes, yeah, so they got to be pure essential oils. Um, don't buy the cheap stuff. If you're going to do it, go for the big, it's little bottles there, eight, ten dollars, but make sure it's a pure essential oil. The answer is yes. We have diffusers in our office. In fact, Lauren, a person who came in today, brought me a diffuser as a gift. She didn't have to do that, but I have an essential oil diffuser now as well. Okay. One of the tips that I found that helps is if it says, like, on the oil, relax, like, therapy, uh -huh. or, like, energize, right. read the label. Because um, a lot of th that's typically when I find that it's like they're using all kinds of fake stuff or they're using um, scents. Oh, yeah. What, what is it called? Um, what do they call it? It's like fragrance. Fragrance, there you go. Yeah, it just yes. says fragrance. Oh, yes. Um, fragrance, parfum, any of that, not good. Yeah. Uh, is reflexology a great solution for many disorders? Yes, it goes really well with chiropractic care. By itself, I'm not sure it's that great, but along with chiropractic, it's pretty awesome. Yes. Dr. Gale does a lot of reflexology. What do you think of Bulgarian rose nectar drinks? Got me on that one. I don't know. So at the end of the hour, Instagram goes, and we got to reboot it, and that's it. 
So he will welcome them back. He will welcome them back. Yes. <laughs> yes. Welcome back. News weather and traffic station. News 95.5 and AM 750 WSB. Depend on it. The information presented on this program is not intended to take the place of your personal physician's advice, and it is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Discuss with your own physician or healthcare provider to determine what is right for you. Hey folks, Dr. Joe here. So glad you're with us today. We're talking today about sugar and Alzheimer's disease. And this is a very serious topic. I know we try to make light of things here on the show, but you need to know this because there is no treatment for Alzheimer's. There's only prevention. And the prevention, the one thing that's the easiest thing to do is be careful of your sugar intake. Now, when I say sugar, we talk about white table sugar, breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas, because people say, what about whole wheat bread? Wheat is still a sugar. The part that makes the flour is called an endosperm, and that's basically just eating sugar. So there really aren't any good grains out there. People say, what's a good bread? Well, there really isn't a good bread. Unfortunately, I'm Italian, and believe me, it hurts me to say that to you. I wish there was a good bread, but there's not. So if you're going to eat bread, just small amounts. That's going to be the key here. Now, uh, a regular segment of the show, it's called Doc Head to Toe with Dr. Joe. And we talk about different parts of the body, starting at the top and working our way all the way down to our toes. And today we're going to be talking about the brain. Now, it just happens to correlate with this topic, Alzheimer's. Uh, that just happened to kind of line up properly. But with your brain, your brain controls everything. Now, as a chiropractor, my job is making sure that the brain is working properly because your brain sends messages down your spine, out your nerves to every cell in the body. So there's a nerve right now that makes your heart beat, your lungs breathe, your fingers move, your eyes twitch. Everything is hardwired to the brain. So without the brain, we don't do real well. You can get your arm cut off and survive, get your leg cut off and survive. How do we kill people? Cut off their heads. The brain can't talk to the body anymore. So the brain is really important, and the brain needs three things. It needs stimulation, oxygen, and nutrition. So when we talk about oxygen, it's very important that we breathe properly. Now, as a radio show host and a TV show host and as a chiropractor, I try to stand up as much as I possibly can. Because when I'm standing, I'm opening up my diaphragm and my lungs and I'm able to breathe better. Most of you are sitting all day. I sit when I have to do paperwork or when I'm in my car. So when you sit, you're compressing the lungs. If you have scoliosis, you're compressing the lungs. That's curvature of the spine. And so it's really important we breathe properly. Most of us don't. And the biggest problem I find with people with breathing issues is the stomach is pushed up against the diaphragm. When you breathe in, the stomach drops down. And when you breathe out, the stomach pushes up. So if your stomach is pushed up against the diaphragm, you're not able to get breath or the proper breath. And so then you're struggling. You're trying to breathe with your, your ribs, and that's not a good thing. So if you have acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, you snore at night, uh, you have sleep apnea, chances are if we pull the stomach away from the diaphragm, you might get some great results with that. So if you have that, come see us. So that's oxygen. Uh, nutrition. The brain needs nutrition. Now, as we get older, uh, our blood vessels aren't as flexible as they used to be. You have a chemical in your body called nitric oxide. Nitric oxide opens up your blood vessels. So if the blood vessels aren't opening up like they're supposed to, we can take something called Dr. Joe's nitric oxide, which opens up the blood vessels. Now, I've got to give you a warning. If you have high blood pressure, you're taking medication, be careful if you take this because it may lower your blood pressure because it's gonna open up the blood vessel. So monitor your blood pressure when you're taking it if you're on medication, because your blood pressure might go too low. Wouldn't that be a good problem to have? Well, may not be a good problem to have, but that's what you'd like. And then I tell people, you gotta give up the medication or give up the nitric oxide, it's your call. But the nitric oxide helps stimulation to the brain, the reproductive organs, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, um, all parts of the body. And after 40, your nitric oxide levels start to drop. So nitric oxide can help the brain get oxygen as well. And then good nutrition, Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source. It's the minimum amount of supplements you should be taking every day. And someday when I'm Grand Poobah of the universe, I'm going to make sure that the world is taking Super Greens and Essential Source every day, including children. And I will be amazed at the changes we'll see because I see it happen with all my patients and we ship the supplements all over the world. So, But uh, if you want a Super Greens and Essential Source, go to our website, drjoe.com. You can get them there. Also, if you want to save shipping, which I'm fine with, come by one of our offices. We have offices in the Atlanta area, Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. Pick them up yourself. Save the shipping costs. I don't want to pay the post office. I'd rather put that money in your pocket. And as far as diet goes, mostly fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds is really the ideal diet. Um, if you're eating alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener, not a good idea. Um, so if you go to my website, you can listen to the lecture that I did called The Seven Deadly Sins in Nutrition and a follow-up lecture called So What Can I Eat? And then the brain needs nutrition, uh, stimulation, I'm sorry. 
So stimulation is learning new things. Exercise is excellent stimulation. Try to move as much as you can. We did a show the other day on uh, exercise, and if you go to the website, it's there. And do things on purpose to move around. Uh, my printer that I use from my office is on the other side of the office. So if I want to print something, I get up and walk all the way to the other side of the office. Why? Because it gives me a reason to walk. And sometimes I'll print just one page at a time just to give me reasons to walk. If I get a break in the middle of the day, I'll walk around a building a few times. Near my one office in Marietta, we have a beautiful walking trail right behind it. I'll go out for a walk at lunch. So try to get 10,000 steps a day. I know we've covered that several times before. And that's amazing uh, stimulation for the brain. Listening to this show is a great stimulation for your brain. A lot of people will download our shows off the web website, drjoe.com, and listen to them while they're walking, while they're working out, while they're driving. The podcasts are crazy good. So if you like learning this stuff, go to the website, listen to these shows. That's amazing stimulation for the brain. So now we got the brain working properly from oxygen stimulation and nutrition. And then from a chiropractic standpoint, if you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, you might have a pinched nerve or a pinched blood vessel in your neck going up to the brain. So you have pain. So stop suffering needlessly, of course. But it's also got, may affect the brain as well. So if you want to come see us in the Atlanta area, offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge, we would love to be your doctors. So go to website, drjoe.com, make an appointment for you, your friends, and your children because we want to get you well and keep you well. And those kids, we love kids in our office. In fact, we did an interview with somebody the other day and she said, I can only, I could come right now, but I have to bring my children. I said, bring your children. Love to bring them in. So we're very kid friendly in our office. We're, we're, we're designed for kids and almost all the doctors have children, I think. One, two don't. Everybody else, three don't. There you go. Yes. Folks, got to go to break. If you have a healthcare question, give us a call. Lines are open. 844-44-DR-JOE. My website, drjoe.com. We've got over 1,000 hours of podcast. You can order supplements. Send me questions through the website as well because we want to naturally get you well and keep you well. When we come back, things that you can do to help the brain work more efficiently and help avoid Alzheimer's. We're talking about sugar and Alzheimer's disease. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. Uh, send us your email address. We'll put you on our newsletter. We want to get you well and keep you well. We'll be right back. neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, headaches. Maybe it's time to stop suffering and it's time to take action. If you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, why don't you come see me and my team of doctors and let's see if you have a problem that we can help. Go to my website, drjoe.com or call 844-44-DR-JOE to make an appointment today because so many of you are out there suffering needlessly and we want to put a stop to that. Come see us at our offices in Marietta, Stockbridge, and Duluth. Make an appointment today so we can help get you well and keep you well. Are you experiencing hot flashes or fatigue? Do you have uh, sleepless nights? Or there. Um, you can always choose on your own to carry that segment into one or two parts. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's up to you. Sure. Um, yeah, I thought that was enough. I think. Yeah. Okay. Because we're doing brain anyway. I don't want to, you know, beat the brain to death. Yes. All Please right. You got start. questions? I do. Uh, okay. Just personally, are you? Not big on five hour energies. Do you think that okay? I think no. those on long trips sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Now what they do is they uh, you you produce a, a chemical in your brain called adenosine, and adenosine is released in the brain, absorbed by adenosine receptor sites, and that makes you tired. What caffeine does, it looks like adenosine, so it blocks up your adenosine receptor sites. So you don't absorb adenosine, so you don't really get energy. It, it stimulates the nervous system too, but it blocks up the adenosine receptor sites to prevent you from getting tired. Problem is your brain says I want to be tired. So then it produces more adenosine receptor sites, so you need more caffeine. So it's not a good idea. Yeah. You know, yeah. If it's an emergency, maybe, but I wouldn't do it, you know, on purpose. Yeah. Um, hello, Dr. Joe. Hello. I enjoy your radio show. I enjoy you listening. <laughs> I also eat green eggs and ham. <laughs> I eat them everywhere. Sam, I am. Sam, I am. We have a Dr. Sam. He can be the Sam I am. <laughs> is there a standard amount of sleep we should get? Uh, usually the general general consensus is seven to eight hours. Um, I got six hours and 45 minutes last night, and I was great. So, yeah, seven, eight hours is usually good. Some people can do less, but you kind of got to find out your sweet spot, but generally seven to eight hours. And we've done shows on sleep. If you go to website, drjoe.com, it should be in the, if you search, search, put in the search bar, we should be there. How is the diaphragm adjusted? Take the stomach and we massage it down this way. Now you can't do it yourself. You can try. I've tried because I have this condition myself. We pull the stomach away from the diaphragm. Then we check the nerves in the upper back because that's the nerve to the, to the stomach and the esophagus. And then we check the fourth cervical nerve. That's the nerve to the diaphragm. So it's a process. All right. So, hey, Dr. Joe, my friend became a vegetarian, but her iron levels went very low. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice 
Uh, she's 41, eats plenty of non, I'm sorry, iron rich foods. Okay. Including spinach and beans. I would check the diaphragm to see, see if there's any digestive issues and maybe an absorption issue. Um, I would get her on super greens and essential source. Monitor her. If it's still an issue, uh, we can get her on some plant-based iron supplements, but I'd rather try to not do that if we can avoid it. So. But it could be a digestive issue. If she's eating plenty of iron-rich foods, it's an absorption issue then, and we got to check out why she has absorption issues. Um, I've, I've got something myself. Um, I've been doing intermittent fasting Monday through Friday, no breakfast, no lunch. Wow, that's great. Before Lent. Uh -huh. If I keep trucking with that, should I just I would drop probably a few more pounds? Oh, yeah, as long as you maintain your weight and your energy. Yeah. Okay. You'll plateau, but as long as you maintain your weight and your energy, you're fine. You don't eat a lot of food. You need quality food. Right. That's the difference. Okay. You don't need more, you need quality. What is the choice? What's the Joeyism? Um, you're not mean? hungry for food, you're hungry for... You're hungry for nutrition. That's right. a Joeyism, right. It's not hungry for food, you're hungry for nutrition. So give your body nutrition, you won't eat as much. I don't eat a whole lot because I give myself a lot of nutrition. So I save a ton of money too, by the way. Oh, man. I go out to dinner with my friends and every, you know, 20 30 $40 meals. I'm like 10 I'm like... Dr. Joe. Yes. Somewhat political. Okay. Um, how come... GMOs are banned in most other countries to get the, um, yet they're totally willing in the U.S. Why is it not against the law for the food corporations to lie about what they're I was doing? just about to cover that. My next segment was on GMOs, as a matter of fact. Why? I don't know. I'm not a president yet. However, Herman Cain is doing a commercial here, and Herman Cain knows Donald Trump, and maybe Herman will get me a job as a Surgeon General. Let's see what we can do. i got to talk to Herman about it. And we have Eric Erickson here, too, also is friends with Trump. So... You know, regardless of your political views, wouldn't it be cool if I was Surgeon General? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no more, no more food pyramid. Oh, pff, I know. Pick a shape. We flip it, flip it over. What are you, what are you thinking? Yeah, <laughs> just flip it over. It would work fine. Coming back. The pause. It's funny. We had so many calls before. We'll have to monitor that and make sure it's not the segment. What's that? Oh, that could be yeah. Personal responsibility and independence are important to you. Start today with something completely in your control, your help. Dr. Joe Esposito is on. Hey, Dr. Joe here. So glad you're there. We're talking today about sugar and Alzheimer's disease. And it's really important you know this because there is no known treatment. The only treatment is prevention because uh, once it happens, it can be too late. Um, so there are limited treatments, no available cures yet. You got to be careful with that. And it has to do with the body creating these things called amyloid plaques, uh, hippocampus, the part of the brain that controls memory is shrinking. And a lot of that has to do with sugar. And one, uh, was it the, I forget what it was, the uh, Centers for Disease Control might have said it, 89% um, increase risk of Alzheimer's if you have a high sugar diet, high carbohydrate diet. So it's, it's hard to cut out the sugars, folks. And I've done shows on this before on how to avoid sugars, how to get over the sugars. There's a supplement you can take called Gymnema because now we're going to start talking about things you can do uh, to get the brain working more efficiently. And if you have any questions, lines are open, 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. We got a lot of callers today. Um, so we're talking about uh, how to get the brain work more efficiently. And a supplement you might want to consider is something called Gymnema. Now, we carry it at our office. It's not on a website, but you can call the office, and we have it there. And Gymnema is a supplement. It's, it's actually, I think it's a tree bark, if I remember correctly. And originally, if I have my story correct, it started in Africa, and people would use it if they had to travel long distances to maintain their energy levels. And so Gymnema is a wonderful supplement to help stabilize your blood sugar. I, do, I recommend it a lot with diabetics to stabilize blood sugar. And then also people that have sugar cravings. How many have sugar cravings aside from everybody? Um, you have to avoid the sugar because once you have a little bit, it stimulates the dopamine receptor sites in the brain. The brain gets high and you want more. You've heard me say before, I can't eat a cookie. I can eat a box of cookies, but I can't eat a cookie. So I can't start and have a cookie. And I crave it just like you do. But I have to say, is it worth it? And that's what happened. I was talking to somebody the other day, one of my patients uh, who gave up alcohol. And they said, you know, Doc, I heard you say on the radio one day, you, you have to ask your question, yourself a question, is it worth it? And if the answer is no, it's not worth it, don't do it. I said, exactly. And they said, it wasn't worth it to me anymore. And I stopped doing it. And that's perfect. I had a, I had, last time I had a drink, I don't know, it was, I can't remember, decades ago. And I had a glass of champagne. I was on vacation in a place called Anguilla. And they sent a bottle of champagne up to my room, and I had a glass of champagne. I felt awful, and I stopped drinking. And I said, why am I doing this? I feel awful. And that was it. So you have to decide to yourself, is it worth it? And to me, the answer is no, because we have about 26,960 days in the average life. That's it. 
I want to live everyone to its fullest. And the easiest thing you can do to improve the quality of your life is eat a better diet. And if you eat a better diet, it's simple. It's easy. It's quick. It's cheap. You'll save a ton of money. So it's not hard. It's easy. But Jim Nima is a nice supplement to go back to that. Uh, and if you're craving sugar, you're going nuts. You can't resist anymore. Take one of the tablets and chew it. Tastes awful, but it numbs your, sugar, your taste buds. And so you can have the Jim Nima then and then have something sweet. It has absolutely no flavor. And you go, why am I eating this? It doesn't taste sweet anymore. But that's one thing you can do to help stabilize the sugar. Fiber is going to be really cool because fiber pushes the sugar through your colon so you get a slow release of energy. And what happens is the fiber can block up your sugar receptor sites. And so you absorb less sugar. So if you eat an apple and you drink the same amount of apple juice, you're going to absorb much less sugar by eating the apple than you would by eating the, drinking the apple juice because you, you, it's not pushing through and you, you're not blocking up the receptor sites. So there's little tricks you can do. So if you're dying for something sweet, have an apple, have a mango, have a tangerine. And I think that'll help tremendously. It's going to take a little bit to get you set. It's not going to happen in one day. But after a few weeks of doing this, you're going to go, you know, I don't really have those cravings anymore because it really, really works. Remember, what, what, what do we do about this show? Healthcare that really, really works. Now, another major problem we've had in recent years is something called genetically engineered grains. Uh, a lot of these are pervasive everywhere in the United States. And now a lot of other countries outlaw them. So if you go to a grocery store in another country, especially in Europe, about 80% of the products you see in the United States, you're not going to see in the grocery stores there. And the reason is a lot of things have been banned or outlawed in these other countries. So for example, if you bought a soda with high fructose corn syrup, you may not be able to uh, buy that same soda in another country, same brand, but they're going to use sugar as opposed to high fructose corn syrup because many times high fructose corn syrup is made with genetically modified foods. So they, don't, they won't allow high fructose corn syrup in a lot of countries. So we're behind the times when it comes to that, and I'm hoping that that changes. I'm working real hard. Me and my colleagues are working real hard to just get some common sense out there. And if when common sense prevail, prevails, well, then a lot of things uh, go the right way, which is kind of nice. Uh, I'm not a fan of GMOs, please. Uh, corn, especially high fructose corn syrup, corn and soy are the uh, top two foods that are genetically modified. Many times we use genetically modified rapini seeds. I knew it as broccoli rabe as an Italian. Uh, but rapini seeds, we make canola oil from. Canola oil is many times made with genetically modified seeds, and it's very high in omega-6 fatty acids. Omega-6 fatty acids increase inflammation. So by cutting out the omega-6 fatty acids, that helps inflammation, and that helps your brain work better. And we're going to talk about guts and inflammation in just a second, but let's take another caller here. Some folks have been hanging on for a while. Dave, how can we make your day better? Um, hi, I'm calling about my um, pregnant wife. This is her second, second, our second pregnancy. Yes. And she's just really been having a extra hard time with uh, sharp back pain um, uh, at night when she's trying to go to bed. And so she can't sleep because the pain is so intense. Sure. Um, and uh, this is my first time even considering um, looking into chiropractic care. Um, and I know I always listen to your show, but I figured I'd, I'd, I'd at least run that past you, see what your thoughts are as, as far as the best course of action to try and alleviate some of that pain because it's really sharp and she really can't sure. even sleep at night. Absolutely, yes. Uh, chiropractic care because the nerves in the low back control the colon, the sex organs, and the bladder. So the nerves in the low back control the baby. So aside from her back mm -hmm. pain, which we definitely want to get her out of pain, we'll cut, we may be cutting off the nerve and blood supply somewhat to the baby. And that's why when people get chiropractic care, the deliveries are usually better. The babies turn out usually pretty good. Um, so I would strongly advise you get you know come see us or somebody to get chiropractic care to get that fixed because the pain is a warning sign telling you something's really wrong. So, okay. Ah, okay. All right, and and you try to avoid medications in the meantime. Well, you definitely want to avoid that because remember the baby is going to absorb just what the mommy absorbs. So if we can avoid medications, I'd recommend ice on the low back, twenty minutes on, twenty minutes off. But we can see her tomorrow if you needed to call us. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. And we'll get her set up right away. You can call the number you just called, 844 dr Joe, uh, or the website, drjoe.com, to book an appointment. We'll get her in right away. All right. That sounds good. Thanks, Thanks Dave. A lot. Look forward to seeing you. Yeah, folks, it, it really is. Pain is a warning sign. Pain is telling you that there's something wrong. And if you ignore the pain, uh, it can cause problems. Because remember, 10% of the nerves feel pain. 90% of the nerves don't. So you can have a pinched nerve and not know it. And this is why in our offices, our doctors are trained to check the nerves that feel pain, but also check the nerves that don't feel pain. Because we don't want to get you out of pain. We want to get you well. So we get the nervous system working properly. We get the digestive system working properly. And then we make sure you're on a good diet. 
and we do a nutrition workup on all our patients. Now, I know this show goes all over the world, so if you're not in near my offices, we can always do a phone consult for nutrition as well, and you could just call the office and get that set up as well. But we want to get you well and keep you well. And the biggest complaint I get, you've heard the show before, what is it? Why didn't I do this sooner? Why did I suffer for so long? Because pain is a warning sign. It's telling you something's wrong. And the other thing is if bones are out of place, they rub up against each other and they wear out. And as the joints wear out, the spine, the discs wear out, the bones get closer and closer together and they pinch the nerves. So here's an aha moment for you. All of you have arthritis, degenerative disc disease. What do you think it's caused by? Bones out of place. It's always mechanical with, rheum uh, uh, with osteoarthritis. So, so if you have bones out of place, if the joints wear out, come see us. 844-44-DR-JOE will get you an appointment. And if you have a question, 844-44-DR-JOE 4 will get you through, hopefully. Uh, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. My website, drjoe.com. We have over 1,000 hours of podcasts there. Uh, you can make appointments, order supplements, send me questions if you have them, because our job is to naturally get you well and keep you well. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. Send us your email address, too. We'll put you on a newsletter so you can be one of the cool kids. Folks, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. Tell your friends about the show. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. Dr. Joe Esposito here with Dr. Rick Ambrosi. There we go. All right. What do you have? What do you have? If you were appointed Surgeon General, what's the first thing that you would do? I would change the diet. I would set up some new guidelines for diet. Someone chimed in and said that you would ban coffee, sugar, and meat. Uh, I can't ban it. I'm also a realist. Uh, I'm not going to ban it. I'm just going to make sure that people have the information so they can make better decisions. So that's what I would do. And can we update the signs for nutrition in public schools? Oh, my gosh. Like I know, right? 75 years old. <laughs> Well, I would make chiropractic, I, I'm joking when I say this, I'd make chiropractic care mandatory. You know, if we're going to make vaccines mandatory, you got to make chiropractic care mandatory too. So there you go. <laughs> what about chiropractors as regular physicians? As regular physicians? Or what's it called? Primary. primary. Oh, primary absolutely. And we, it's, it's happening. A lot of pay, uh, uh, where, you know, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Garrett, in our office, we are the primary physician for most of our patients, actually. So it's kind of nice. And I'm not against other doctors. I'll refer out and I'll refer in and I'm more than happy to work with my colleagues and they refer back to us. Like I said, I don't know, Garrett, and I, how many free meals a week do we get from our, our medical colleagues? Two, three a week sometimes? I don't know, but it makes the intermittent fasting hard. It does, yeah, because everybody wants to take us out to dinner. You know, come out to dinner. Let's go here. Let's go there. Come to our office. Everybody's courting us really on a daily basis. We get invited to something, so mm -hmm. kind of fun. Garrett likes it. Free meals. Mm -hmm. Free date, right? Yeah. <laughs> Garrett brings Sierra. It's a free date. So. <laughs> He's a big shot. Come on, honey. I'm taking you out of a fancy restaurant. Do you but you have to listen to this 45-minute presentation. That's true, too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a timeshare for healthcare. So. Do you recommend apple cider vinegar before each meal? Yes, absolutely. Raw organic apple cider vinegar. I take about two shots a day. I don't like it. Um, I try everything known to man. I keep shaking it up, hoping I find a good answer. Um, I've tried tart cherry. I don't like tart. I don't do well tart. Um, lemon juice and stuff like that. I, I have. To, I don't. I don't do well with tart. So vinegar is not one of my favorite things. But I take it every day. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, are nuts the highest yielder of protein for a vegan? Yeah, nuts, beans, seeds. I mean, they're all good sources of protein. But here's the thing: you don't need extra sources of protein if you're a vegan. As long as you're eating enough food to maintain your weight, you're eating a good variety of fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. You don't need any more protein. Biggest question I get, where do you get your protein from? Where are we going to print that up, Gary? We need to just print it up, and I'll hold up a sign. <laughs> <laughs> Read this, and I'll go, I'll go on break. <laughs> no, I, w I want to make shirts. Shirt. Ask, I'm vegan. Ask me about my protein. There you go, because everybody's going to do it anyway, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, well, I was wondering something myself. Uh, I watch a lot of sports. Mm -hmm. It seems like a, a lot of these athletes are freaks of nature enough as it is. Yes. Do you think if they did what you did, would they perform even better? Oh, a lot of them are going They do, and they're already going that way. Oh, yeah, the, the trend is definitely in that direction. Oh, so yeah. The biggest you... thing is the amount of energy it takes to break down a non vegan form of protein or uh, just any, any mineral or nutrient. Yeah. Um, assimilation for meat is going to be anywhere from 40 to 60%. So you eat a two ounce steak, you're yeah. really getting one ounce of that steak. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't break down to weight, it's more. Yeah. Now, facts. you go to website, drjoe.com, and listen to our Food Romance Connection. We talk a lot about energy and romance, and mm -hmm. but the trend is really going to a plant-based diet. So many athletes who are already great go to a plant-based diet and are just like off-the-chart superstars. Yeah, it's happening. Because right. mm -hmm. the biggest thing there would be, I guess, recovery time when you get done working out. Sure. But if you're using all your energy to break down all that food, 
instead of using it to rebuild muscle, right, right, um, you're you're kind of at a, a disadvantage. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. No, nope. especially Absolutely. with like the whey proteins and stuff like that. <sighs> Horrible. Horrible. <laughs> And then what is that? Is that the pancreas or the... Well, the, the, the everything is broken down in two places. The, the mouth breaks down carbohydrates in the pancreas. The stomach breaks down proteins in the pancreas. And then uh, fats will get down to the gallbladder and pancreas. So, yeah, the pancreas is always under stress. Yeah. Less stress. I'm Where just you? thinking of the guys that I see walking downtown with their giant tubs because they just left the, yeah. I won't name it, uh -huh. uh, three-letter superstore. Yes. Uh -huh. and, uh, yeah. That's all right. <laughs> Famous man once said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He said that Friday, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll tell you something I don't know. What's that? How do you spell that African bark? G-Y-M-N-E-M-A. Look it up. See if I'm right. See if I get a bell. I'm going to try it. There's a lot of people watching. I think they're just shy right now on Instagram. Don't be shy, Instagram. <laughs> How did you spell it? G-Y-M-N-E-M-A. You got it. Hey, I give myself some bells today. There you go. That's it. That's a high, Becton Regional High School education right there in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Um, Barbed wire take fence around. Humana yeah. Insurance. Uh, I yes, I think there's out of network coverage. Yes. So we take all insurances and we try to match the benefits the best we possibly can. So just because we're not on your list, that doesn't mean it's not out of network benefits. It's so confusing. We have a whole team of people dealing just, just on insurance. So come see us. We'll always try to match your benefits the best we can. I can attest for the most part to Humana Insurance because that's what I have. Okay. I'm oh, there we go. For the most part, no. good. Oh, not yet. We still have time. Uh, I, I, I saw uh, Andrew Longoria sit back down. I thought, uh oh, we're in trouble. So, all right. That's Texans fan. Um, <laughs> Even he gets a pee break every now. I don't, but he does. <laughs> so, I have a bunion and flat foot. Is my pelvis unstable? It's probably your foot that's unstable. One fourth of all the bones in your body are in your feet. And if any one of those bones come out of place, it can cause the whole mechanism to shift, and that can lead to bunions, flat feet, foot pain, uh, neuromas, uh, plantar fasciitis. So we can adjust the feet just like um, everything else. I want to get this one out before we go on go air. Um, with Whole Foods being bought out, do you think it's still a safe place to shop? Yeah. you got you got to know what to shop for. Exactly. There you go. Try to buy organic. Whatever you can. Okay, here we go. Take a look at the roads. Man, only two more segments. How did that happen? Chiropractic help am Ambliopia. Ambliopia. The eye issue? Yes. Well, I have eye issues. I have macular degeneration. And my macular degeneration, go to websites, the number one blog. You watch my eyes get better. So the answer is probably yes. I'm going to throw this one over the air if you don't mind. Million dollar question. Dr. Joe, what did you have for lunch today? <laughs> I had Brussels sprouts. I told you that already. I had Brussels sprouts and a salad. Roasted Brussels sprouts. I didn't put balsamic vinegar on them. I just did it with salt and pepper and olive oil. I wish I'd done a balsamic vinegar. Are you a neurochiropractor? Um, I'm an orthopedic chiropractor. We do a lot of neuro, but I'm not a chiropractic neurologist. I'm a chiropractic orthopedist. And with that, we incorporate the neurology, so we kind of cover neurology and, and the orthopedic. So come see us. Fifty WSB. Depend on it. If brains were looks, he would be the Brad Pitt of radio. That's why you listen to Dr. Joe Esposito on WSB. Hey, Dr. Joe here. So glad you're there. We're talking today about sugar and Alzheimer's disease. And obviously, it's a hot topic. Social media is lighting up. Our phones here at the studio are lighting up. If you have a question, give us a call, 844-44-DR-JOE. Uh, whenever I talk about sugar, it's a big issue. So it's, it's something that everybody, I, mean, I love sugar. Who doesn't love sugar? And on certain days, maybe we'll have little baskets of sugar with candies and chocolates. And, and then Halloween, we also have that. And then we have Christmas and then we have Thanksgiving and then we have 4th of July and then we have a Memorial Day and then we have Labor. you realize how much sugar we eat to celebrate? Isn't that silly? We celebrate by poisoning ourselves. Doesn't make any sense to me. I don't want to do that. I don't, I want to celebrate by feeling good, not feeling bad. You know, people, I'm going to go drinking. It's New Year's. I'm going to feel like junk for two days after that. So, so anyway, let's talk about, we only have two more segments here. If you have a question, 844 Uh We want to talk about the things that you can do right now to help risk, lower your risk of getting Alzheimer's disease. And it's not hard. It's pretty easy. Of course, we said all, avoid all sugar and refined fructose. Because what happens with fructose, am I going to cover that later? I wanted to go into that. Uh, yeah, let me go into it now. When you eat sugar, the uh, table sugar, 50% fructose, 50% glucose. 
the glucose gets absorbed into the body and is utilized as fuel. The fructose has to go into the liver and be converted into glucose. And in the process, the body throws off uric acid as a waste product. Now, uric acid gets in your joints and it hurts. Now, I'm a chiropractor. My team of doctors are chiropractors. I'm even board certified in pain management and I'm board certified in orthopedics and I'm double board certified in nutrition, five board certifications. So if you have a pinched nerve, that can cause an inflammatory reaction. If you have uric acid, that can make the problem worse. So if you're eating a lot of fructose, it's creating uric acid. Uric acid gets in your joints and it hurts. What famous disease is linked to uric acid? Gout. Of course, everybody knows that. But all the joints can be affected by uric acid. So when uric acid is in the body, it, it slows down your production of nitric oxide. Nitric oxide opens up your blood vessels. It's nature's little blue pill. And that increases circulation to your brain, to your reproductive organs, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, uh, your arms, your legs, your liver, your stomach, everything needs circulation. So if you're eating a lot of fructose, it's preventing the body from producing the right amount of nitric oxide, which can affect circulation, which can affect everything. So when patients come in our office, almost all the patients want us to do a nutrition workup on them. And they're very excited when we do. And we may recommend dietary changes. We give you CDs to listen to. We may recommend supplements. Of course, what's the minimum amount of nutrients you need every day? Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Uh, folks, if you're not doing that, please, I'm begging you, start doing that. It's two powders. They taste great. They're relatively inexpensive. You can get them on the website or in any of our offices. Um, and I take it every day. And if I have a big day, I'll take a double dose. If I have to do a lot of housework, yard work, uh, the other day I moved a whole load of wood chips, um, I'll take a double dose of super greens and essentially. If I travel, it keeps my immune system strong. So I can't imagine a day without it. And you can mix it with coconut milk, almond milk. Somebody's called in before a pomegranate juice. Just get it in your body. Mix it up with a frozen banana. If you don't like it, uh, you want to make a smoothie, frozen bananas, frozen blueberries, strawberries, uh, get it in your system. You'll be very happy that you do. So that's the minimum things that you need every single day. And then you're not going to be eating as much sugar because when you have the nutrients in your body, you don't crave the sugar so much. So Super Green is an essential source. Minimum supplements. If you have a circulatory issue, Dr. Joe's nitric oxide, that's on a website too. Uh, and that stuff works great. I can't even take it at night. I have to take it in the morning or else I can't sleep. It gives me so much energy. So just be careful with the sugar. Uh, you want to avoid gluten and casein. So that's primarily wheat and pasteurized dairy. Uh, because what happens is research shows that the blood-brain barrier is a chemical barrier around your brain. Uh, the barrier keeps things out of the brain that don't belong there, uh, and it can be negatively affected by gluten. So I promised you earlier I was going to talk about how the gut and the inflammation and the brain all tie together. If you eat a bad diet, if you have acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, uh, if you're eating a lot of wheat and dairy products, those proteins can irritate the lining of the bowels and cause an inflammatory reaction. That inflammatory reaction is not just regional, it's systemic, which means it goes through your whole body. So as it goes through your whole body, that inflammation can actually affect the brain. This is why when people have serious digestive issues, uh, irritable bowel syndrome, uh, celiac disease, many times it affects their brain, it affects their mood, they're grumpy, they, they can't sleep, um, their mood swings, because the inflammation that's caused in the bowel is now systemic and going up into the brain. So we really got to take care of the gut. We're going to talk a little bit about probiotics and how that affects the gut as well. So folks, you got to take care of that gut if you want your brain to work. And as we get older, everything doesn't work like it used to, including the digestive system. So as we get older, it's more important to eat a good diet, not less. And I talked earlier about uh, senior citizen homes, and I've yet to find one that I'm impressed with, and I'm always depressed because they're feeding them cookies and cakes and donuts and sugars and ice cream socials and, and, and uh, just horrible jellos. And it's just horrible because of all the sugar that's in there. So you got to just be careful with that because a lot of those things that those people are eating are not good for them. And then artificial sweetener is even worse because artificial sweetener affects the brain in an adverse way too. So be careful with the, the gluten, uh, which is wheat, barley, and rye. Some people think it's only wheat. Barley has it in there and rye has it as well. And that's why a lot of people have reactions when they drink beer because it's a gluten. Now they have gluten-free beer, which is interesting. I didn't know that. Years ago, I found that out. Um, I don't recommend you drink alcohol, but I recommend you don't eat gluten either. Uh, casein is the protein in dairy, and that can cause, a, it usually irritates the bowels as well. And uh, it sensitizes your immune system. So if you keep putting these things in the body that keeps irritating the immune system, like gluten and casein, the immune system becomes sensitized, and then it, it promotes inflammation and actual autoimmunity. The body just starts attacking itself. So try to take those bad things out of your diet. And here's my challenge to you. I gave a lecture the other day on uh, CBD oil, actually. And one of the things I said, here's my challenge. I forgot I haven't done this challenge in a while. I want you to eat right for two weeks. 
I want you to eat fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. So let's do it for a month. Take Dr. Joe's Super Greens. Take Dr. Joe's uh, Essential Source. Uh, eat right. Drink a lot of water. Uh, listen to my, my shows on what to eat, what not to eat, the seven deadly sins of nutrition, and so what can I eat. And I want you to follow that advice for four weeks. If I'm wrong, so what? I'm wrong. I lied to you. Am I the first guy to ever lie to you? Ladies are all laughing. Ha, 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 ha. But if I'm right, which I am, then I want you to consider doing this as a new lifestyle. So do it yourself. I'm, it's, it's, aside from the Super Greens and the Essential Source, it's free. And you'll save, by the way, so much money. You can afford cases of Super Greens and Essential Source because eating right is so much less expensive. So try doing that and see what happens. And I think you'll be blown away with the results. Uh, you got to get folate in your diet. Vegetables without question are your best source of folate. And we should eat plenty of raw vegetables every day. Uh, avoid supplements that have folic acid in them because that's the synthetic version. You want to do folate, not folic acid. Some people say, I take supplements, Dr. Joe. And uh, somebody, I was, was I guest on another show? Anyway, came up. There was a study released last week that said supplements don't help your health. Well, I looked into the this, this study, and from what I can tell, they use synthetic supplements. Synthetic supplements don't work. You want to use non-synthetic supplements, which are Dr. Joe's supplements. You want to make sure you're getting quality. In my book, Prescription for Extreme Health, I have a quote from my grandfather, my mother's father, and he said, always buy the best, it's always cheaper. And boy, is that ever true when it comes to supplements because you can buy fish oil, maybe have mercury in it, and it can actually cause more brain damage. You can buy ascorbic acid, but it doesn't work nearly as well as a whole form vitamin C. So you want to make sure you're eating all the right foods in the right combination, but making sure you're getting quality supplements as well. The soil is depleted. It's not like it was 30, 40, 50 years ago. If you're old enough to remember that, remember peaches were juicy, watermelon was sweet, even milk had something in it. What was that called? Oh, flavor. That's right. Milk had flavor. Doesn't have that anymore from what I understand. I haven't had milk in 30 plus years, but it's, it's a whole new world and it's a wild, wild west out there when it comes to nutrition. So you want to make sure you're eating the right foods and taking the right supplements on our website, drjoe.com. Great source of information. Folks, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. One more segment. We might be able to sneak another question in or two. I'm not sure. 844-44-DR-JOE. We're talking about uh, sugar and Alzheimer's, how to get the brain to work better, and the things that you need to do. So that's our last segment we're going to cover there. If you have any questions I don't get you on the air, you can send it to me through the website, drjoe.com. Want to make appointments, come see us, drjoe.com. Uh, follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. We live stream a lot of our shows. You get to see my pretty face. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. We'll be right back. back pain, shoulder pain, headaches, <clears throat> chances are you'd benefit from chiropractic care. Most people benefit from chiropractic care because chiropractic care tries to get to the cause of your problems and not just cover up the symptoms. If you're ready to get well, I want you to go to my website, drjoe.com, or call 844-44-DR-JOE and make an appointment for you, your friends, and your family today. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. Make an appointment today so we can help get you well and keep you well. Okay, Banky, last segment. What do you got? All right. Go for it. Um, my vitamin D level is 9, and I'm also anemic. My doctor put me on 50,000 IS. I think that was I use. I use a vitamin D2. Yeah. And told me to take iron and B12. Uh -huh. Will Dr. Joe's supplement help with this so I'm not taking all? Yes, vitamin D2 is a synthetic version. What did we just cover? Of vitamin D3. So by taking 5,000 international units every day of vitamin D3, I feel you're going to get a much better bang for your buck than taking the synthetic version of vitamin D2. So I'd rather you have to take the vitamin D3 and the vitamin D2. The reason they don't give you vitamin D3 is because it's synthetic. It's not synthetic, so they can't prescribe it. Okay, it's a natural form. They can only prescribe the synthetic versions. So I would prefer you do that. If the iron is low, super green is an essential source, great source of iron. Uh, when they talk about iron, many times they give you uh, iron that'll cause constipation. So if you're taking iron, it causes constipation, not the right form. Plant-based iron doesn't have that effect. Uh, we got a lot more questions, or should I keep going on this one? Lots. Okay, so uh, try to super the essential source and try to digestive enzymes and see if that helps. Go ahead. Um, can Alzheimer's be genetic? Yes, but it's a genetic predisposition, not genetic. So make sure you do everything you can to protect yourself. What if the joint is worn out, not just partially worn out? Can you help? Uh, we may have to consider stem cells in that case, but either way, you got to get it realigned because even if you take stem cells and the bones are out of place, they just rub right up against each other and wear out again. So, Well, then, are there any foods that aid in cartilage growth? Yes. We have a supplement that we uh, recommend called Ligaplex 2. It's not vegan. It's from a company called Standard Process, but it's very good for helping rebuilding joints. So. Why is it not vegan? Because it's not vegan. It's a glandular. Uh, so it does work. So. I don't know what that means. Uh, is all bottled water okay to drink? 
He was waving at you. Uh, no. He was stretching. Okay. <laughs> a screener was waving to our board operator, but I was actually just stretching. So, um, No, the bottled water, if it has a funny flavor, don't drink it. Uh, read the bottle, too. Many times it says source that a municipal tap. So basically it's tap water, put it in a bottle. So I'd rather you get a water filter for yourself and just do it that way. It's a lot cheaper in the long run. It's very expensive up front, a lot cheaper in the long run. Is hydrochloride a healthy B vitamin complex? Because that's what employees from companies like one famous energy drink company say. Uh, but I think they're misinforming me. Yes, they are. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you want to get the natural B complex. Like I said, folic acid, folate's natural, folic acid isn't. Dr. Joe's B complex, you're safe. Um, uh, Dr. Joe, avoid all dairy. What about grass-fed butter? I choose, I choose not to do dairy. I prefer you don't do it. If you're going to do dairy, it's got to be organic. Can you sketch? Are you good? Because I would really like a shot of butter eating grass. <laughs> <laughs> Just to round out the show. Tim could do that. Tim Andrews is so, such a great artist. Yeah, he is. <laughs> butter, uh, butter eating grass. That's funny. Uh, um, if you're going to do, do any animal product, it's got to be organic. I prefer you don't do it. Uh, how do you feel about... Or what would be the problem if niacin is giving me a migraine, and what would be an alternative? It's a vasodilator. It's open up the blood vessels. You can do non-flush iron niacin. You got to talk to you, go to a health food store and ask what it want. It doesn't give you a flush. So, um, and the question about the energy drink stemmed from an earlier question about um, all the advertising and all of the mountain bikers is the the extreme sport, but. Mm -hmm. um, they're always drinking energy drinks, mm -hmm. and they're always advertised energy drinks, sure. sponsored by energy drinks. Sure. Um, It'll give you energy. It does work, but it, there's long-term side effects. Yeah. So I'd rather not do that, you know? I find if I take adrenal support, nitric oxide, and, and Dr. Joe's B-complex, I'm buzzing, man. And Super Green's an essential source, you know? How long you work with me, Garrett? Work with me? It's a couple of months. Several months. Have you ever seen me tired? Not really. Yeah, and I'm more than twice your age. Yeah. Okay, I've seen you tired. You never see me tired. So, I do. I yawn in front of this guy <laughs> all throughout the show, all day at work. Normally, he passes me a bottle of adrenal support after I do it, but I never catch him slip. I think I've made him yawn once. Ever. <laughs> it's like a challenge. Look, <laughs> <laughs> give in. Oh. All right, coming back. Last segment. If you didn't get to your questions, folks, send it to me through the website or just make an appointment to come see us. It's a lot easier. Hey, Dr. Joe here. So glad you're with us. Last segment, man, that was quick. How does that, you know, Rush Limbaugh says the fastest three hours on radio. I disagree with him. We have the fastest two hours on radio. Um, if, if we miss anything, this show will be on our website tomorrow, drjoe.com, along with over a thousand hours of other shows, uh, videos and audios. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram because we do live stream a lot of our shows. Get to see my pretty face. And if you want to, you want to become part of the Cool Kids, send us your email address. And we'll put you on our newsletter because we send out some cool stuff. Sometimes we have private lectures, like kind of breakout lectures just for our folks on a newsletter and for our patients, and you'd be invited then too. So kind of cool. You can do it through the website, drjoe.com. So we're talking today about, uh, uh, what are we talking about? I forgot. No, Alzheimer's. I'm only kidding. No. <laughs> Alzheimer's and sugar. And so we want to make sure we cover all that. Uh, you want to eat, uh, we talked about folic acid versus folate. Folate's a better one. Uh, you want to make sure you're getting some fat in your diet. I don't recommend you go on a fat-free diet. Your body needs fat because the body makes cholesterol out of fat. And cholesterol is really necessary because cholesterol, what cholesterol does is it, um, it, it's a building block for your hormones. So it helps the hormones work more efficiently. Uh, it makes hormones, as a matter of fact. Your cells have a lipoprotein layer around them. Lipo meaning fat, protein meaning protein. So you have a lipoprotein layer. You need that as well. Uh, so don't go on a fat-free diet. That's not a good idea. Uh, good sources of fat would be what? Nuts, seeds. Uh, coconut oil would be okay. Extra virgin olive oil. Make sure it's organic. Uh, pecans, macadamia nuts. Macadamia nuts actually have omega-3 fatty acids in them. I was in Hawaii one time giving a lecture, and um, I took a tour of a macadamia nut fact, uh, farm, and they said they have omega-3s in them. How about that? Um, uh, avocados, of course, are great too. I got to be careful. If I eat a lot of fatty foods, I get fat. Now people, oh, you got to eat avocados. I can eat maybe one avocado a day. If I eat like two or three, man, I just start to blow up. So find out what works for you. Everybody's a little different. So find out what works best for you. You got to get the bacteria in your colon working properly. You do that by doing, eating good foods. 
Now, uh, cabbages have natural probiotics in them. That's why they ferment so well. That's why you can make sauerkraut and kimchi out of them. So that's very important. Also, if you do have a less than perfect diet, I'm going to recommend Dr. Joe's probiotics. And the probiotics are awesome because they're, it's the probi probiotics that you need. And then when you're eating things like super greens and essential source and fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds, they have something to call prebiotics. Prebiotics feed the probiotics. So you need both. And so by eating a good diet, super greens and essential source, and then Dr. Joe's uh, probiotics are good. Now we put probiotics in the essential source as well and prebiotics. So you got to get the bacteria built up in your colon. And I've done many, many shows on this. If you go to website, you can uh, listen to many, many shows on this topic because it's really important that you get the, the, the probiotics right. If you have digestive issues, acid reflux, if you've taken antibiotics, if you drink tap water, if you swim in chlorinated swimming pools, chlorine is an antibiotic. Why do we put it in the pools and the hot tubs? Because it's an antibiotic. And so if you keep doing that, you're going to be not knocking out the good bacteria in your colon. So the probiotics are there, and it's, it's, it's something I think is just great. Blueberries are great. Wild blueberries have a high something called anthocyanidine levels and antioxidant content and are known to guard against Alzheimer's and other neurological diseases. Here's a little tip for you. If you want to get fresh breath, okay, you can chew gums, which have sugars and chemicals in it, or you can use mouthwashes. Uh, and, if you, if, and there's two things that can give you bad breath. One is you didn't brush your teeth or you have a rotten tooth, and the other one is a bowel issue. So if your bowels aren't working properly, the gases that are produced in your colon get absorbed into your blood system, are exchanged in your lungs, and then it comes out of your mouth. And you've all smelled somebody with, this smells like potty mouth breath. That's usually a digestive issue. Then I'd get them, I'd adjust their stomach, I'd get them on digestive enzymes. Uh, but if you want to keep fresh breath, you can use something, this is my secret stash here, called cloves. Little cloves, you put them, you know, you put them in oranges or ham. Uh, you could get them in a grocery store. I carry a bag of cloves in every one of my suit jackets and in my car. And whenever I'm giving a lecture, I'll take a little clove out and I'll break the little butt off and that breaks up and put it in my mouth and just suck on it. And it gives you wonderful fresh breath. It's antibiotic, antiviral, and antifungal. It has more, pro, uh, more uh, antioxidants than blueberries. And when you suck on it, it gives you wonderful fresh breath. Now, I go to a lot of meetings, a lot of conferences. I do a lot of speaking. I'm always invited to these events. And I always keep cloves with me because I don't like talking to somebody and their breath stinks. So I like to keep a clove on there, so I always smell fresh. And people, it's always funny. They go, something smells real nice around here. It's me. So cloves are a really great little thing. And as they start to dry, you can keep them forever. And if they start to lose their flavor, throw them away. They're really, really, really cheap. So might be something you might want to consider as well. But that's another good source of antioxidants. So um, again, we're talking about things that you can do to help prevent Alzheimer's disease. Uh, we talked about the nitric oxide, really important. Opens up the blood supply to the body. After 40, your nitric oxide levels start to drop. Uh, B12. Uh, a study from Finland published in the journal Neurology found that people who consume foods rich in B12 may reduce their risk of Alzheimer's disease in later years. For each unit increase uh, in the marker of the vitamin B12, the risk of Alzheimer's reduced by 2%. So what you want to do is make sure you're getting B12. I have a problem. As a vegan, I don't, yet, I don't eat a lot of foods with B12 in them because B12 comes from bacteria breaking down in flesh. I'm trying to be not be too gross here, but the bacteria breaks down the carcass or the, the dead animal, and that creates the B12. So as a vegan, I don't get a lot of sources of that. So what I do is I take Dr. Joe's B-Complex because it has the B12, and we put B12 in super greens. So you want to make sure you're getting your B12. Uh, the enzymes we talked about to help break down your body, vitamin D levels. Gosh, time goes so fast. I got so much more to cover. Next time you get your blood level checked, make sure you get your vitamin D checked. And if your vitamin D is low, get out in the sun. Now, from spring to fall, you're okay. You can get sunlight and you're in good shape. What happens is in the winter, I take, I take a supplement. I, I have a supplement on my website, uh, uh, vitamin D. Now, even if it's summer and you don't get out much, you're an executive, you go from your house to your car, from your car to your, your, your parking lot, from your, park, your parking garage into your office, and you don't get a lot of sunlight, like 10 or 15 minutes a day, when you get your vitamin D levels checked, Make sure you keep that vitamin D level high. I've talked about this so many times. It helps with the immune system. It helps with bone growth. It helps with brain function. Vitamin D function, really, really, really important. So make sure you're getting enough. Exercise is really important. You want to keep the body in motion because the body is designed to be in motion. We're not designed to sit still. So every chance you get, I want you to stand up. We did a show on this, I think, two weeks ago. Uh, you can get a standing desk. I don't recommend a treadmill desk. Desk. Because with a treadmill desk, desk, you have a tendency to fall down. You can hurt yourself. So a standing desk is good. Uh, park far away and walk. Go for a walk every day. Get 10,000 steps in every day. You really want to get that walking in there. You want to avoid things that mercury in the body, metal fillings, 
50% mercury by weight. Mercury is a, it essentially short circuits the body. How much mercury do you need to make the body operate? Zero. You need zero mercury in your body. You can get it from fish. That's why another reason I don't recommend eating fish. Fish oils, make sure it's mercury-free if you're going to do that. If you have the metal fillings in your mouth, I'm going to recommend you go to a biological dentist, not a regular dentist, because they have to remove them a very specific way of removing it. You don't want to just start drilling that mercury. All those vapors will be released into your body, and you ain't going to be happy if that happens. So be careful with that. Oh, my gosh. Is it time already? Uh, I got more to cover. Folks, got to run. Uh, Andrew's playing the music. That means I got to run. If you have any questions, send them to me through the website, drjoe.com. If you want to make an appointment to come see us, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge, the Atlanta area. We want to be your doctors. From a chiropractic standpoint, we want to get the nervous system working, your digestive system working, and a good diet. Supplements are on our website. Um, send us your email address. We, sometimes we have little breakout seminars. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. And if I don't say it enough, thank you so much for listening. Because, folks, we want to be your doctors. We want to help you get well and stay well. Tell your friends about the show. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. We'll catch you next time. All right. One last question. Go ahead. And that is, um, are there any fruits or vegetables that we should aim to get into our diet on a daily basis? <sighs> Berries are great. Uh, berries are really good for that. Uh... So I'd recommend berries every day. Super greens, an essential source, really solves that problem. And the reason I created super greens, an essential source, is for that exact reason. Because, uh, let me just make my notes here, is because I wasn't always getting everything I needed. So now I do. So super greens, an essential source, would be great. Uh, subscribe to our newsletter. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. Tell your friends about it. And thanks for tuning in. Catch you next time.